なさそうしない。
Good afternoon, dear participants. We are just waiting for uh, Joint Secretary to join. So the, he is right now busy with the, uh, some meeting. So we will start in uh, 10 minutes. Uh, say around 2.45, we will start the session once he joins. Okay. Leap, sir, can we start if you are able to hear me? Welcome, Welcome everyone. 
I think you should start. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, so, dear participants, we are now starting. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shalesh Chagrawal, and I, on behalf of Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Government of India, and Building Materials and Technology Promotion Council, GIZ, and on my personal behalf, extend a very warm welcome uh, to all the participants to this third webinar on Lighthouse Projects, which is being held today for uh, Lucknow LHP site. I also extend uh, my very warm greetings to Chiri Kuldeep Narayanthi, our Joint Secretary and Mission Director, uh, Housing for All, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Government of India, for his cordial presence in this webinar, along with other officials from the Ministry, PMU team, and GIZ team. I also welcome state level nodal agency, uh, SUDA, Duda, their officers and their SLTC, CLTC team, including officers, engineers, architects of other state level agencies. The representatives of uh, technology providers, including construction agency uh, personals, are also welcome uh, to this webinar. Uh, as you all know, today's webinar is being held at Lucknow, which is one of the lighthouse project site under Global Housing Technology Challenge India, which was conducted on 2nd and 3rd March 2019, and through which we shortlisted 54 technologies, which were categorized into six categories, and now they are being showcased in six uh, lighthouse projects. Through this webinar, our efforts will be to make you all understand and learn the innovative construction systems being used in this project. Just to tell, sir, that the participants in this webinar not only include technographies, who registered through online enrollment drive initiated by HFA Directorate, but also we have uh, engineers, architects, planners, professionals, faculty members, developers, technology providers, and students from various engineering and architectural colleges of UP, as well as from other parts of the country. The overall objective of this webinar is to educate the attendees about the new construction systems being used in the project, uh, build capacities within India, and make all the participants aware about the various initiatives taken by government of India to, uh, to introduce and mainstream these innovative emerging construction technologies in the construction uh, sector. Let me also tell you that uh, these in innovative construction systems are resource efficient, climate responsive, disaster resilient, and energy efficient. Also, these technologies impart speed uh, to the construction activity and help deliver superior affordable housing and infrastructure, which is far better uh, in terms of structural and functional performance, quality, durability, than the conventional brick masonry and uh, RCG frame construction. Uh, at present, to showcase these innovative systems, six lighthouse projects are being constructed in six places, namely Rajkot, Chennai, Indore, Lucknow, Ranchi, and Agartala. All these six lighthouse projects, as I told you earlier, are using six distinct innovative technologies. And we will be holding these webinars at all these six places for the participants to understand all these systems. So far, we have conducted two webinars, namely at Rajkot and Indore. This is the third one. There will be around 40 webinars till 2022. During the webinar, we will also be taking you to the virtual tour of uh, Lighthouse Project site at Lucknow to take stock of present construction activities and will provide you hands-on experience on the construction technology, how it is being implemented and the various processes being used in the project. It's a unique opportunity uh, for all of you and I sincerely hope uh, that all of you will get benefited by this webinar and learn new things which can be implemented by all of you in your future projects. Before uh, we get into technical details, uh, it's my present uh, duty to invite our Joint Secretary, Sir Shri Kuldeep Narayanji, who has been leading the mission from the front and a constant source of encouragement to make his uh, uh, opening remarks. Over to you, Kuldeep, Sir. Thank you, Salesji. Welcome all the participants in this webinar, which is uh, what I think third one in the series of 40 such webinars. And in coming months, like today, the webinar is for uh, LHP Lucknow. In coming months, you will have more such webinars from LHP Lucknow also. So the kind of videos, the kind of live stream you see today in uh, today learning sessions. In future sessions, those uh, you can corroborate with what uh, with what you hear today and how construction is taking place in this new technology. Salesi has given quite a bit of introduction for the technology, so I will not go into that. 
in the technical session you will be seeing the video as well as uh, how how this can be utilized in the uh, other such buildings i what i would like to draw your attention is very simple thing that we are targeting professionals who are working in this field who are engineers who are faculty members who are students i would request that if anyone has switch on the mic kindly mute it i all such faculty research scholars engineers for you this is the opportunity to see how new technologies are developing if you have not uh, registered as technography i would request you to go and register you can those who are researchers they can do their thesis their projects on these new technologies you can show this see this uh, video see this learning sessions show in your uh, uh, colleges show in your departments to other stakeholders bring your own team to the project sites our purpose is not construction of these buildings let me tell you very frankly our purpose is to demonstrate such a resource efficient and fast technology which like uh, we are seeing lhp lucknow it is based on one innovative technology those who have uh, those of you who have been to lucknow or if you belong to the place you know there is a new mall coming up lulu mall they are also using some new technology our purpose is that more and more people use new technologies for construction of buildings this will reduce the burden on environment this will speed up the uh, pace of construction and any construction any building which is fast paced saves money because it is completed uh, in a short span of time what we have seen that compared to traditional technology the ratio is 1 is to 2 that means if you are taking almost 2 years to complete a building then in case of new technologies you can do that in one year your project can be completed in half the time so seeing this when i am requesting those attending webinars that if you are not registered as technographers please come you should go and register yourself you should see the learning module you should also attend the corresponding learning modules that come after for other lhp uh, lhps and this lhp in subsequent months how construction moves how this technology is being used to construct such a big building in a short span of time and if you are researcher if you are doing any academic work you can use this uh, you can write your research papers on these technologies and these are live laboratories these lighthouse projects what our honorable pm calls them so i would say that uh, let these live laboratories be used these are these are the learning places if you want to see something new we have seen lot of buildings getting constructed lot of uh, big buildings with the traditional technology but new technology that exposure which you see today is going to come handy for you in your coming career you will be having knowledge because once building is complete then it is very difficult to understand the technology the time you have to understand this technology is when it is being constructed so my best wishes to all the participants i i just request you to to pay attention to this session and use this technology propagate this technology in all walks of life wherever with whom so ever you come in contact with you should request them to come and see the building thank you everyone Uh, thank you sir thank you sir for uh, your encouraging uh, message and uh, now i request manish to run a short film of 5 minutes for lhp at lucknow after that uh, we will give a specific lecture on technology so thank you sir kuldeep sir and uh, may i request manish uh, to run a short film which we prepared for lhp at lucknow 
and please all of you switch off uh, your mics because we are uh, hearing a lot of uh, mixed voices Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs Government of India has initiated Global Housing Technology Challenge India to identify and mainstream best available global technologies so as to bring paradigm shift in the construction sector 54 innovative technologies put in six broad categories were shortlisted during the challenge process six lighthouse projects at six locations with six distinct technologies are being constructed lighthouse project using prefabricated sandwich panel system with 1040 dwelling units in g plus 13 configurations along with all basic and social infrastructure facilities is being constructed at lucknow in partnership with state government of uttar pradesh honorable prime minister laid the foundation stones of six lighthouse projects including at lucknow on 1st january 2021 aaj garibon ke liye madhyam varg ke liye ghar banane ke liye nayi technology desh ko mil rahi ye 6 lighthouse project देश में हाउसिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन को नई दिशा दिखाएंगे लखनऊ में कैनेडा की टेक्नोलॉजी यूज कर रहे हैं जिसमें प्लस्तर और पेंट की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी और इसमें पहले से तैयार की दीवारों का उपयोग किया जाएगा इससे घर और तेजी से बनेंगे This video briefly shows the progress of lighthouse project at Lucknow till date. In this system, the stay in place PVC panels and PEB components of steel are manufactured and the factory in control conditions. The construction is done in the sequential manner. The pre-manufactured wall panels and hot roll sections are transported to the site. These sections are erected on the pre-prepared foundation using cranes and required connections as per the design. The decking sheet is installed for flooring. Once the structural frame and floor are installed and aligned, the stay-in-place PVC wall panels are fixed as per the design in the lower floor. Conduits are fixed along with reinforcement and cavities are filled with design concrete. Upon installation of wall panels, the finishing works are executed. The foundation work of the project started with excavation of site. followed by laying of plain cement concrete footing work erection of stem column as per foundation design the construction of plinth beam and back filling to complete the substructure while foundation work is going on the prefabricated steel components as well as stay in place pvc panels are getting ready in factory superstructure work has started in all four towers sequentially and now steel structure frames have reached up to ninth floor in two towers Simultaneously infrastructure work of water tank compound walls community center and sump are under progress A sample flat in tower 1 with all amenities is ready for showcasing it to the beneficiaries and other stakeholders Beneficiaries for this project have already been identified by the state government The LHP Lucknow is serving as live laboratory for learning. More than 200 technographers and other stakeholders have visited the site to learn the use of innovative technology in real project at site. Thank you Manish and uh, before we get into the specifics of the technology being used in uh, lighthouse project in lucknow i will just briefly present you uh, the initiative taken by government of india uh, especially our ministry ministry of housing and urban affairs with regard to global housing technology challenge and uh, give you very briefly uh, the the 54 technologies which we have shortlisted and after that we will get into the specifics of this so i i'll share my screen and i'll just ask you whether you are able to see it or not is it visible uh, to everyone my screen 
it's visible. Please continue. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, So the, the, the title is Emerging Construction System for Mass Housing. And uh, before I get into the specifics, let me just give you the, the overview of uh, Pradhan Mantri Vasi uh, um, Housing Forward Scheme, which is being run by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. We have uh, uh, sanctioned um, around 1.2 crore houses. Yesterday only we conducted the last CSNC of the last financial year, of this financial year rather. And, uh, you know, we have uh, four verticals, uh, affordable housing in public private partnership, BLC, CLSS, and ISSR. And uh, the, the, through this uh, the, the housing for all scheme, we, uh, you know, direct and indirect jobs created are uh, more than two crores and 16 lakh houses out of these uh, 1.2 crore houses sanctioned, uh, 1.6 million houses are being constructed with these new technologies, which we are going to uh, explain to you in, 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 in subsequent slides. So what I was telling you on 2nd and 3rd March 2019, we conducted a global housing technology challenge uh, uh, India, which was inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister. And uh, through this challenge, we could shortlist 54 new construction systems. And uh, these construction systems are categorized into these six categories, which I will be uh, explaining you uh, pictorially. And uh, as I told you in my opening remarks that uh, at each, uh, now what we are doing is to showcase and to make these technologies as the technologies of the future, we are showcasing each one of these categories in uh, one of the LHP sites. Like for example, uh, today we are going to discuss uh, Lucknow and in Lucknow we are using the sixth category, which is stay in place bomb work system. So now we have a basket of these 54 technologies and depending upon the requirement, depending upon the geoclimatic conditions and depending upon the, uh, the suitability to your project, um, any one of these technologies can be used. Uh, the lighthouse projects were uh, inaugurated. The foundation stone laying ceremony uh, was done by Honorable Prime Minister uh, on 1st January 2021. And through uh, while inaugurating these uh, the lighthouse projects, Honorable Prime Minister uh, emphasized the need of uh, making these lighthouse projects as live laboratories where anybody can go, learn, understand, and maybe adapt these technologies uh, for their future construction. So that is the whole purpose of conducting this webinar as well, uh, that uh, you learn about these new systems and try to implement them in your future projects in your uh, other works. Uh, before I get into new technologies, uh, what do we have at present? So uh, we have at present these uh, two systems, all of you uh, being engineers and architects and professionals working in construction projects know about this. Either, you know, when we go to isolated houses or single to two-story houses, we find most of the construction across India is being done uh, in load-bearing uh, fashion. Uh, uh, it is called, uh, you know, masonry construction, load-bearing uh, load masonry construction, where you create the load-bearing walls with the brick and masonry, and then you have a cast in C2 uh, slab. Otherwise, uh, you know, after uh, now this system is also being replaced by this uh, RCC uh, cast in C2 RCC frame construction, uh, the, the, the picture which you uh, see in the bottom right, where we make RCC beams and columns, and then the, uh, the, the walls are filled with the, you know, either brick or AC blocks or any other thing. So these are two uh, uh, the, the systems which are being used most widely across, uh, across not only across India, but across the world but we call them business as usual approach and if you continue to use these systems uh, you know there are a whole lot of things uh, the, the projects are uh, you know caught in time overrun cost overrun these uh, systems are not sustainable because you are using brick you are using um, a lot of cement steel energy intensive materials they are not eco-friendly they are not sustainable a lot of waste is being generated and things like that so there is need uh, to introduce new systems so with that in background let me just give you uh, that uh, this business as usual approach or conventional construction system vis a vis uh, these emerging construction systems which we are uh, talking about. First and foremost thing is the conventional construction systems are slow uh, by their very nature because you need to collect the material at the site, then you you know um, put the reinforcement, put, do the shuttering, and then remove the shuttering. It is dependent on weather, and there are so many things. Whereas alternate construction systems, because most of the work is being done in the factory or offsite.
right? Uh, they enable faster delivery of your building and infrastructure. And the, this has been discussed in various forums. Speed is one of the major criteria if we want to uh, build new young India and if we want to take our economy uh, to five trillion, ten trillion dollar economy, we have to introduce fast track construction systems or fast track construction technologies. Uh, second is maximum use of natural resources. Uh, the, you know, uh, uh, all of you, uh, if you have, if you happen to visit any site and if you are working as a project engineer, you all know how um, you know we use uh, cement sand aggregate and especially water just to make concrete uh, workable we keep on adding water so that way we are utilizing maximum uh, natural resources which is that means uh, these, these systems are not resource efficient whereas in alternate system where you are doing the production manufacturing in the factory you optimally you know the, decide the the, the 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 various materials and use them optimally so optimum is the key thing uh, uh, let me also tell you please don't get me wrong i don't say that don't use cement to see, but use them optimally because they are based on finite natural resource, uh, which is lying stone, um, iron ore, and things like that. Uh, waste generation, a lot of waste is being generated. Any project site you go, if you have conventional uh, construction, where, whereas in alternate construction system, material comes from the factory. All you have to do is you have to you know assemble that material, and there uh, there is almost no waste. Pollution, uh, air, land, water uh, the pollution is there with conventional systems, whereas uh, uh, with alternate system uh, pollution is minimized. Uh, conventional construction system is labor intensive, whereas alternate construction is an industrialized system. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the, the, we don't have labor here, but we, you have a whole lot of other allied sectors where uh, work is there. So uh, that way it is uh, better. Then um, conventional construction systems are based on prescriptive design, whereas alternate construction systems are cost effective design. Prescriptive design means, you know, all the time you have nine inch wall, you have a six inch uh, slab, which is prescriptive, which is given somewhere and we, we, we keep on using that irrespective of uh, knowing the fact whether it is required, whether that much of thickness or that much of depth of uh, slab or beams is required or not. Okay, so here the, in alternate systems, you can customize uh, the design, the sizes, the sections, everything can be customized suiting to your um, requirements, uh, suiting to your design, so thereby making the whole uh, project cost effective. Unhealthy indoor quality, better health and productivity in alternate systems, uh, whereas in conventional it is uh, indoor quality, uh, there, 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 there are very good and interesting studies being done word over where it is uh, concluded that the inside air quality is more detrimental to the health than the outside air quality because of the quality of paints, pesticides uh, and other things we are using and constantly within the premises of your house or your building, um, you know, the, um, the poisonous gases kind of thing or, you know, the, the gases are being emitted which have adverse effect on health. So health uh, is also very important and um, inside air quality needs to be maintained. And once you have better health, it, the productivity increases. Uh, conventional construction system now and then you have been hearing in newspapers as well that a few buildings fell very recently and uh, uh, there is a regular maintenance affair, whether it is leakage, whether it is uh, distress, corrosion and all those kinds of things, whereas in construct alternate systems, uh, uh, maintenance is minimum. It is low life cycle cost. Energy intensive, energy efficient, because here we use the processes which make the entire uh, you know project energy efficient uh, once you do the once you do everything construction uh, at the site then uh, sometimes quality control all of you know that uh, quality sometimes uh, compromised uh, irrespective of using good quality material you cannot assure the quality when um, it is being done by unskilled people or if you don't supervise it properly whereas in alternate system because the work is being done in the factory so whatever comes from the factory it is uh, uh, you know quality control and quality assured uh, approved so uh, that will ensure uh, your uh, quality uh, product as well as quality project okay uh, then eco friendliness if we talk about uh, the, you know the because of climate change and all these things now stress is being given on um, the, the greenhouse gas emissions carbon dioxide and all uh, so conventional construction systems uh, have high carbon um, you know greenhouse gas emission whereas uh, the, the, in alternate we have low uh, emissions uh, so overall uh, conventional construction systems are unsustainable and therefore we have to go for sustainable development systems which um, you know, add to sustainability. 
So that is why we require these emerging construction systems. Also, uh, this is a, a slide to show you advantages, and we have, uh, you know, uh, I have put it in form of an acronym. It is a, a these emerging construction system will help you build a safer structures and safer uh, name anything. The, the, you know, all all those objectives criteria can be fulfilled if you go for these emerging construction system. S it stands for sustainability, and sustainability stands for resource efficiency, climate responsiveness, and environment. Uh, uh, so this is very important and this is need of the R. You cannot um, continue to use uh, the cement brick and all these creatures natural the way we have been using it for uh, several uh, decades or historically. So the second is affordability, cost effectiveness, as I told you here, uh, designs are based on design. The entire project is customized and based on certain principles. So you can have um, cost effective uh, design and uh, project. So uh, that that adds to affordability and fast, uh, you know, some sometimes it is said, said is speed is money. So um, if you can deliver your project uh, at, at a much uh, at a faster rate, then you achieve affordability functionality. Uh, most of the time when we deliver these lectures, a lot of questions are being raised on um, you know functionality of these kind of buildings or buildings being buildings infrastructure being uh, built with these emerging systems where we have thin walls and all let me assure you that um, the, 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 in fact these systems offer better functionality in, in terms of thermal acoustics water leakages and fire resistance economical you can produce economical structures uh, uh, because we we have low maintenance here and better quality and resilience is also to be given top priority because uh, in our country we have not only earth but we have floods, cyclone, uh, and other kinds of disasters like landslides. Uh, so whatever we do has to be has to uh, be uh, hazard resistant construction. And nowadays we are talking about multiple hazard resistant construction. So uh, these emerging construction systems help in uh, disaster resistant construction, and uh, they uh, are structurally much superior than your conventional system. Also, uh, there was a study by the Energy Research Institute which uh, concluded that uh, sustainable buildings help in uh, reducing uh, water uses, energy uses, greenhouse gas emission, and overall reduction in waste up to 75%. So with this, let me introduce uh, these six categories which I just showed you. And pictorially, I will try to explain you these uh, the six categories. So these six categories, let me tell you that first is 3D volumetric precast concrete construction. Other one is precast uh, components assembled at site. Third one is steel and light gauge steel structural systems, sandwich panel system, monolithic concrete construction system, and stay in place homework system, which is being used in Lucknow. So this is the first category. And now I think to picture only, you can uh, get the idea of what we are talking about. So that cast in situ frame construction is being replaced by these kind of 3D, what you see here in this, let me just take this. Okay. So what you see here is the entire module, as for your project recommend, the entire module is made in the factory um, or in the uh, you know casting yard near to your site, and then you put one over the other like building blocks. And uh, it's not that I'm just talking to you, this technology currently uh, being used in a lighthouse project at Rachi, where these uh, modules are being made uh, in the uh, casting yard uh, near the project site. And here um, you, you can put door windows and you, you can finish, you know, 70, 70 to 80 percent of the finishes and all those things, including services can be done uh, at the factory. So we are replacing construction uh, with customized factory volumetric construction because it is it, it comprises of walls and slab that is why it is called volumetric construction and these are the various stages and uh, we will pretty soon uh, be take, taking you to LHV Rachi site also and uh, we'll be conducting a webinar there so then only then you will get the fair amount of idea how it is being done and this is a picture uh, uh, from a project site at Boyser in Mumbai where you know six uh, around 32 houses were uh, constructed in um, uh, three months by this technology so you have a mold where you push the uh, the reinforcement mesh then you do the concreting remove the mesh within three days get the um, you know this kind of uh, module made then it is transported to the site put on the already you know uh, laid foundation and then you put one over other and you can do the jointing the way you like it can be wet jointing it can be mechanical jointing it can be through anchors and mix of that kind of thing to ensure uh, structural integrity in product tightness so uh, the, through global housing technology challenge the under 3d volumetric construction we shortlisted four agencies which are given here and you know what we have done since we are trying to create an ecosystem so that these technologies are 
uh, mainstream in our country. We have developed audiovisual audiovisual capsules. We have developed uh, tutorials as well as lectures, detailed lectures on all these technologies. So, if you want to go um, take deep dive, want to have better understanding about all these technologies, you can visit Ministry's website gstc-india.gov.in, or you can go to my YouTube uh, BMTBC's YouTube channel, or um, uh, you can go to uh, BMTBC website and get all the details uh, from there. Uh, so this is that project I was talking about, and uh, I will uh, I strongly recommend all of you to attend when uh, a webinar that which we'll be doing in Rati. We're actually we'll be showing you the casting yard where these three D volume, you know, three D modules are being uh, made in the factory in uh, in Rati. Let's move to the second category. The difference between first and second is this: there we were make, making the volume, we were doing the volumetric construction. Means we are making the entire module or entire room, uh, so as to say. Here we make various structural components of the building. And what are those structural components of a building? Uh, we have beams, we have columns, we have slabs, we have wall panels, we have facades, we have sun shades, we have staircases. So all all of these, instead of you know constructing them at the site, we construct them at the casting yard or in the factory okay and once they are made in the factory or manufactured in the factory they are brought to the site transported to the site erected assembled and you get the building and this technology we are using in uh, uh, lighthouse project uh, in chennai the project is almost uh, is already completed uh, i think 90 percent of the work has already been completed and the work is started in 2021 despite of covid and all the project is completed comprising of thousand houses so you, you see, these are the various components, all components, staircase, wall panels, uh, you know, slab, these are hollow code slabs or spandle beams or wall panels, solid panels, all of them are done in the factory. So the idea here is we are taking the construction from the site to offsite. So sometimes this construct, this kind of constructions are called offsite construction or factory made construction, or P cast or P fabricated construction. Uh, through global housing technology challenge, why I'm showing you this slide? Because sometimes the question is being asked, uh, do we have agencies to execute the big projects with these uh, new technologies? So yes, the answer is yes. We could shortlist eight uh, companies uh, under this category of precast concrete construction systems, uh, precast components assembled at site. And you can see all the big names are there, Lars and Tebro, BG Shirke, uh, you find Elematic. Elematic is one of the, the multinational company who is into you know, hollow core wall panels and slab. Then there's a company called Teamage. Um, you know, I will show you if time permits uh, at the end of the webinar, I will show you a video where Teamage, uh, you know, won a Guinness Book of Rego uh, Guinness Book of Records Award for um, completing a hospital building, three-story hospital building um, uh, in 45 days. Uh, so that is the strength of this uh, these technologies. They not only impart a speed, but also structurally and functionally superior than your conventional system. This is the wor uh, world's eye view of the project at Chennai. And as I told you, I'm very happy to share with you. The project is already um, almost complete. We just finishing touches are being given. Uh, so 1,152 1, houses with precast concrete construction uh, done in Chennai using this precast uh, concrete construction technology. Let's move to the third category. Third category um, is a pre-engineered steel structural system. All of you are quite aware of a steel structural system. You go to any bus stand or you go to any industrial structure, cold storage form or uh, um, any other facility, you will find that uh, the trusses are being made in uh, steel. Then you have steel uh, columns, and uh, that's how industrial structures are being made. Can can't we take the, can't we introduce that kind of thing into the digital sector? The answer is yes. So here, instead of having, and we are doing this uh, kind of a steel structural system in three of the projects, Lucknow, we are using this, which we will we'll be showing you. So instead of making RCC beam and call, if you are aware, uh, if you are a civil engineer or architect, or if you are aware of how steel is being, you know, steel sections are being manufactured, it all, it comes to mind that we have, uh, you know, big girders, eye sections and all hot rolled steel sections. But now the technology has changed. We can have built up section and, uh, you know, uh, just by having built up section, there are, uh, there are um, empty number of opportunities uh, and uh, they can be, you know, the built up sections can be fabricated, manufactured pretty easily and uh, being manufactured in factory, you have to just uh, uh, transport them to the side and erect within no time. Okay. Okay. 
Sorry, there is some. Okay. It's stuck. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So sorry, uh, sorry for the hiccup. Uh, uh, so the, 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 you see, uh, this I we, we have implemented this technology in uh, during Hudud cyclone. Uh, you know, Andhra Pradesh government desired uh, the, uh, to rehabilitate the Hudud cyclone victims. So this was the technology given to them. So the, you can see here, this is a steel skeleton uh, with AC panel being used here. Uh, the other category in this, uh, in fact, uh, under global housing technology, we have clubbed these. Who categories is steel and light gate, but um, here I'm showing you as a separate category. This is also a very upcoming, uh, uh, having great potential. Uh, this light gold form steel structural system. So instead of hot rolled steel sections, you have light gate steel structural sec sections here. This kind of uh, sections are produced in cold form. Uh, so that is why they are light in weight and it is galvanized. Right now, this technology is uh, suited for load bearing construction only up to G plus three. We have recommended it only for four stories, but abroad it is. Being use up to eight stories and uh, in Agartala we are using this technology where we are using uh, the steel uh, structural system and these wall, walls are of light gauge uh, panels okay and um, through uh, global housing technology there are 16 companies which we shortlisted and this number is growing um, you know till you know 2019 they, they, we, we could shortlist 16 right now if we talk to you there, there are more than dozen more uh, another uh, dozen companies added uh, who are into light gauge steel structure system so this is how it looks like and this technology is being used in Agartala. This is the bird's eye view of uh, Lighthouse Project at the Agartala. We will also be holding a, a webinar uh, at this project site. So as I uh, told you, if you can, uh, if you are able to see this, so what we have, we have a steel structural system and we have wall uh, of light gauge panel. So this light gauge panel from both the sides, inside and outside, um, is uh, covered with, uh, it can be covered with a, um, either fiber cement board or you can have a, a precast concrete panel or you can have a aerated concrete panel. Panel, um, or you can have a calcium silicate board. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, this is the wall panel and this is a steel structural system. You might be, you know, I'm using this word steel structural system quite often. A steel structural system, a structural system of a building means a skeleton of a building. Like a human body, we have a skeleton and then it is, uh, um, you know, the, the, the hidden by the, your flesh and by your body. Similarly, the, the skeleton of any building is its structural system. Okay, and then it is hidden by uh, you know walls and those kind of things. So uh, here we have a structural system of RCC, uh, you you know steel beams and uh, columns. Next category is also known as drywall construction. So instead of having, if you see on the left hand side, uh, you see this is the classical uh, way of uh, constructing walls. Um, you know we have just different kinds of wall: English wall, Flemish wall, and nine-inch wall. Uh, you know one brick wall with the um, you know brick and mortar, and then we do the plaster. Now there are so many options available. This kind of um, you know wall can be replaced by dry walls of different kinds. So there are different kinds of walls, and these walls are called sandwich panel system. Why they are called sandwich panel system? Because uh, you know the, the, there is a lighter core, and that lighter core is sandwich between two uh, outer skins okay and those skins can be a fiber cement board precast concrete panel um, or it can be simply plastered and inside core uh, can be either of puff it can be of eps or it can be you know lightweight concrete um, okay so let, let me just show you so, yeah, this is the technology so this wall has been replaced by this kind of customized drywall these openings you can uh, cut at the site or you can get it done in the factory you can put the service here on just think instead of making wall like this, it's cumbersome, time consuming, labor intensive. You get the wall made in the factory and just erect it over the already laid foundation. So, this is the, again on the PCA sandwich panel system. We have this kind of, uh, um, you know, this, so this is this is that core I was talking about. This is the EPS, expanded polystyrene. And if you're not able to understand what does it mean, EPS is nothing but a thermocol of uh, high density. Thermocol is around 5 kg per meter cube, whereas this has a minimum density of 15 kg per meter cube. And then you have a welded wire mesh and these two welded wire mesh are interconnected then you can have a, a plaster from both the sides so the entire thing uh, is known as sandwich panel system and as i told you this core can be of different kinds similarly this outer skins can be of different kinds as you can see here and anything it can be double ward it can be single ward you can use it as a floor roof you can use it as a staircase slab uh, you know there are complete 
through global housing technology challenge, uh, this prefabricated sandwich panel system, uh, uh, we could uh, have nine companies. Uh, so there are uh, nine companies uh, which were shortlisted uh, through global housing technology challenge. And uh, um, the, uh, just a week back, uh, we conducted a webinar there uh, in Lighthouse Project at Indoor. And this is, uh, I think this slide, uh, this slide gives you a fair amount of idea that what I'm talking about, you can see. So these are built up steel sections and the walls are uh, of this sandwich panel system. I think I have a slide. So this, these are, you know, uh, these are called um, EPS cement uh, panels. So these panels are made in the factory. Uh, you have uh, the facing sheets of fiber cement board or calcium silicone board, and the, the 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 core is of lightweight concrete. And that lightweight concrete is special concrete, which is made of uh, cement, fly ash, and uh, you know EPS granules. Okay, and uh, the floor here is uh, dex uh, dex level. Uh, this is the this is the technology which we are using in indoors. So this is called again. This is a category one of the category of free cast sandwich panel system. So if you can see this, uh, so there are facing sheets of calcium silicate board which is filled in between with the lightweight concrete. Uh, next, let's move to the next category. This category is being used in uh, the Lighthouse Project Indoor, and this is the most widely and most accepted technology as of now in, in our country, um, besides, you know, precast concrete construction. So here, um, you all know what is formwork system or shuttering. So what we do normally in a, in a typical conventional construction or traditional construction, we um, uh, erect the, the shuttering of uh, slab, beam, and column separately, put the reinforcement cage, do the concreting, remove the, the, the shuttering. Uh, nowadays, you know, instead of, uh, you know, uh, uh, having the shuttering separately for beam, column, and slab, for the entire house or for the entire model, you can get the customized shuttering made in the factory. And uh, essentially, this uh, shuttering is made of uh, aluminum or sometimes it is of steel or composite. So this customized uh, shuttering is made in the factory. Uh, and uh, the, what you do is uh, the, on, a, um, you know, you put an enforcement cage and put this entire uh, shuttering and do the concreting in one pour, or pour. And within three days, you can remove the shuttering and go to the uh, next floor. And uh, within three days, you get the room made. Okay, so this is called uh, sometimes it is known as uh, it is also known uh, with the name called al uh, aluform. Okay, you might be aware of uh, al aluminum form work system, so it falls under that category. Uh, the, the, the nine companies were shortlisted uh, the, through Global Housing Technology Challenge uh, under this category, and uh, this is being used in Rajkot. Uh, we have already conducted a seminar a webinar there in Rajkot, and this is here we are using uh, another variant of this uh, is the tunnel form. I will show you here again. So this is this uh, this is called invert inverted L. So instead of making all the four walls, we make uh, two walls along with slab with this technology. And this is being used in Rajkot. And let me put uh, on record that uh, on one floor we have eight uh, dwelling units, each comprising of more than 30 square meter area. Those eight units are being um, you know uh, being uh, uh, cast in three uh, in uh, in a week. Uh, using this uh, technology of tunnel form work system in this project. Let's move to the next category, which is being used in the Lighthouse project in Lucknow. This is called a stay in place form work system. In this uh, form work system, once the work is over, you remove this form work and uh, then give it back. Here, in this, this form work acts as the part of the structure. So it acts, it permanently stays with the structure and that is why it is called stay in place. There are different names given to this formwork. It is also known as sacrificial formwork system or uh, loss formwork system. So it comes in two forms. One is insulated concrete formwork or uh, other one is, uh, uh, you know, structural stay in place formwork system. So this kind of blocks you have, um, they have slide and lock kind of arrangement and then you erect the entire wall. In fact, you can do the slab also and then uh, the, 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 the hollow space in between uh, can can be filled with the concrete, it can be normal concrete, it can be lightweight con uh, uh, concrete as per your project requirement. And uh, uh, we are doing, um, you know, using this specific technology, we are, the, the, we are doing a project in, uh, demonstration housing project in Bhopal, where this kind of insulated concrete form work is being used. Whereas in Lucknow, we are using PVC ball form system, oh, yeah. which I will be making a detailed uh, presentation. 
So this is how you get these customized blocks made in the factory uh, with openings or without openings. Then you can cut these openings and then uh, through that slide and lock arrangement, you erect the entire wall and then uh, the, the cavity um, between these two, uh, you know, outer skins or outer leaves uh, can be filled with concrete or lightweight concrete. And you can have the, either you can have the classical traditional casting system slab or you can have the slab also of uh, same similar material. And um, we could shortlist eight, uh, uh, you know, uh, technology providers uh, through Global Housing Technology Challenge. And uh, one of the technology being used in Lucknow is uh, uh, this uh, novel assembler, where we are using factory produced PVC stain place formwork system with concrete and reinforcement and volume units with cast in situ arsenal slab. So this is the technology being used in Lucknow, which I will explain you subsequently. And the, this is that uh, this is just a picture of that uh, the PVC wall form system. Anyway, I'll explain. Uh, and uh, uh, under the, uh, the global housing through the global housing technology challenge and under Pradhan Mantri Vasi, you know, we are running technology submission to which we are uh, you know propagating, promoting, and disseminating all this know-how which we have uh, uh, created uh, uh, across India, across states, and um, uh, handholding state governments and other uh, line departments to make use of this. Uh, knowledge and uh, start using these uh, start making use of these technologies in their future projects okay also to create eco enabling ecosystem uh, we are working hand in hand with the bureau of indian standards and um, the cpwd for all, almost all these technologies which i just talked to you 54 of them they all all have been approved not only by um, the government of india ministry of housing and urban affairs through um, our housing for uh, all directed but also by uh, cpwd Okay, and uh, CPWD has also, uh, you know, developed and uh, they have published the schedule of rate, because, which is very important uh, to have uh, tender estimates. Uh, they have developed uh, the schedule of rates for almost all the technologies, and that has been published in form of uh, daily schedule of rates. So uh, the, the, the overall attempt is uh, to take our construction sector from level zero to level four. This is the last slide of this presentation. And from this slide, you can make out uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, all of you know that how construction takes place. We uh, have the material at the site and then uh, do the construction. And what we want to do is we want to take a paradigm shift from level zero to level four. We want to take our country to level three and level four, uh, where you make the entire house module in the factory and then put one over other to get the, the, the building or multi-story tower made within no time. And uh, one, uh, uh, the other step ahead is uh, instead of making these four walls, you can get the finishes, services, everything done in the factory with the door, windows, the glazing and all in the, um, in the control uh, setup in a factory and then uh, uh, put them like this and start using them. So it's called plug and play kind of forms. Okay. So this is this is the first uh, presentation uh, where I uh, wanted to give you the overview of uh, all the 54. Uh, construction systems which we have shortlisted and which we are promoting across um, uh, across the country and uh, as i told you these 54 are divided into six categories and uh, one of the category which now i will be discussing with you is stain place formal system which is being used in lucknow so let me move to the next uh, uh, lecture i will just stop sharing and uh, share again Stop sharing. So I will again share the screen. Uh, uh, shall we take a, a break of five minutes, Manish, or otherwise I will continue? Continue, sir. So let's move to, and this is going to be a very technical lecture. Uh, I will just again share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Lighthouse project at Lucknow. Yes, sir. Can you yes, see sir. That? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I could recognize Vikas. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. We are able to see. Yes, sir. Okay. We all see that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I, I, I am sorry. I am speaking in English. You want me to speak uh, mixed so I can speak because all, I am also from UP. Uh, you want me to speak uh, in English? Not an issue, sir. Not an issue, sir. You may continue. Okay, so we can continue. Okay, not not not, not an issue. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, sorry for being so fast because uh, I just wanted to give you 
the overview of the efforts of uh, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs regarding, uh, you know, regarding creating a basket of uh, these 54 new technologies. And now let's get into the specific of uh, project at Lucknow. After this lecture, we will also be taking uh, you to uh, to the virtual tour of the project site, where you will actually see um, the virtually uh, the project. Uh, the, the, the if we can show you the erection of columns and uh, you know um, the of these walls, then we can understand what we are talking about. And again, uh, let me again tell you that all these presentations, not only in uh, PPT form, but also in audiovisual capsules and also in my language, are available uh, on the, the the website of Ministry as well as on BMTPC website and also on YouTube channel. So if you miss out something, you can always refer those um, you know the notes, uh, capsules, and presentation by visiting those websites. Okay, so but now I think you are very well aware we are using a DSTC India category called a stay in place formwork system and the technology being used here is a stay in place formwork system with pre engineered steel. So it's a hybrid system uh, which we are using in a Lucknow project. Okay, and uh, this already I explained to you so I will skip this 54 technologies divided into six categories. The red one is this is the one which we are using in Lucknow. This is a uh, this is an overview of the six lighthouse projects, and today we are going to discuss the extreme uh, right uh, project, which is in Lucknow, where uh, as per, in S plus thirteen configuration, uh, the, the the lighthouse project is being done. Uh, and uh, these are the details of uh, other five projects: one in Chennai, where we are using com uh, precast component, Rajkot, Indore, Ranchi, and Agartala. Okay. So this is the layout of uh, Lucknow project. As you can see, there are four blocks, and let me just take uh, the laser pen. Laser pointer. Okay, so we have named them A, B, C, D. So there are one, two, three, four blocks. So the entire, um, you know, and this is an uh, S plus thirteen. So the the, the, the building is uh, fourteen story high, and the layout is of this kind. And uh, you know, in all the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana project under AHP, we we always keep the the ground coverage, uh, the green the green uh, you know greenery is uh, uh, kept uh, at least ten percent, minimum ten percent. So here the green spaces or green pockets are being. Uh, 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 left uh, and which is around 30 percent and if you look at the floor plan typical floor plan so this typical floor plan comprising of 16 dwelling units at uh, uh, at each floor so we have 14 floors and each floor has uh, 16 dwelling units i will also show you, show you a typical layout of one dwelling unit in the next slide and uh, you know all these because it's a 14 story building so all the buildings and blocks have provisions of lifts as well as staircases okay so next slide you can see, and uh, this is a general norm which we are, um, you know, adopting across the uh, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana to provide two houses, um, yeah, two rooms, sorry, with a, a kitchen and a bath and WC and a separate access wherever possible from both the rooms to WC and bath. So this is the typical layout and the minimum area given is uh, 25 uh, square meter carpet area. And uh, um, here uh, the, the, the carpet area is 34.51 square meter uh, as proposed by state government. And uh, the all these individual sizes, let me also tell you this, uh, that uh, the, the space norms are given in National Building Code 2016. So all these dwelling unit plans layouts need to conform uh, to natural building code so natural building code has a um, you know um, uh, space norms for ews housing so that the, 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 those norms are nothing but you know uh, size of a room height of a um, room width of a kitchen width of a balcony so it uh, strictly adheres to the the norms uh, given in ndc also in all these projects, because these are called lighthouse projects, we have included a number of special features. And that is why we strongly recommend that uh, you all should go and visit these projects. Uh, all these projects need to comply with the green rating um, of Griha. So minimum uh, star rating three need to be achieved uh, during construction and after the construction for all these projects, which uh, for all these lighthouse projects. Also, use of renewable resources in terms of rainwater harvesting and solar lighting uh, is included in the project. Solid waste management is part and parcel of all these lighthouse projects. Um, uh, uh, STP with recycling of wastewater, so wastewater management is also stressed um, in terms of you know using the wastewater treat, uh, treated wastewater for uh, other purposes such as flush, uh, uh, flushing and uh, you know gardening purposes. And uh, since it's a high rise structure, um, firefighting norm is strictly as per NBC uh, NBC norms. And this is the technology which we are using. This uh, the the left hand side I already covered uh, in my previous lecture. So this is what we have. 
And uh, now uh, I have given you enough background so you know why we don't want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, make use of these uh, 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 construction systems uh, uh, anymore. We have to replace them because we have to introduce the speed and the other things which I talked about. So here, that structural system which I was talking about, RCC frame is being replaced by, uh, you know, this kind of prefabricated steel beams and columns which are made in the factory. And these, uh, you know, the, the, these are called infills, you know, infill walls. So these infill walls, you look here, these are made with, uh, you know, brick masonry or AC block or ply edge bricks and all. Here we are using this new technology, a special technology which is being used first time in India at, at such a large scale, which is called the stay in place form work system. I will show you next slide. These are called pre-finished walls. So this is a wall which you can buy from the factory and just put it and just put it here and start using it. There is no need to do plaster and all, and it comes with different coloring options. So uh, I think you understood this. Load carrying uh, system is a steel structure and uh, infill walls are of this PVC wall. Okay, and why it is called a stain place formwork system, which I explained to you in the earlier lecture, because here instead of temporary shuttering, which is removed after the work is over, here it, here it, it stays with the structure to act as a part of the structure. So staying with the structure, that is why it is called a staying place form work system. And uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, for structural system, we are using this, uh, you know, the built up steel structural system. And you may be asking that why we are not using this alone, why we are using it in a hybrid thing, because the structure is high rise. It's a 14 story structure, and that is why we are not doing it with the you know, load bearing option of PVC wall form system, because it is being used for the first time. Okay, now the, these various structural elements I will explain to you one by uh, one. Uh, normally, uh, you, uh, yeah, all of you know about this, but let me just for the sake of clarity, uh, please, uh, I request you to mute your mic. Uh, so you see a typical building. If you see a typical building, it comprises of uh, superstructure and substructure. What is substructure? Substructure is the structure which is below the ground. So what we have below the ground, below the ground, please uh, mute your mic. Please mute your mic, I request. So the, below the ground, what we have? Substructure, which is foundation. And above ground, what we have? We have superstructure. And that superstructure comprises of a structural system, which I already told you. This is that structural system, beam column. Then we have slab. So this is that slab. And then we have wall panel. So for each of them, except foundation, we are using innovative uh, systems in the, in the program. So let me just show you first foundation and, you know, for all these, uh, there, there, may, there might be another question to your mind that uh, what about foundation? So for all the projects, foundation uh, being used is conventional because uh, in our country, soil strata varies from place to place. Somewhere we may have alluvial soil, somewhere we have a marshy land, somewhere we may have rocky terrain. So depending upon the soil strata, bearing capacity, water table, um, you know, the, 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 the foundations uh, vary. The, the type of foundations where we may have in, in fact in our projects also somewhere we have rough foundation somewhere we have isolated rcc footing somewhere we have pile foundation like in agartala we have marshy land so there we are using um, the, the pile foundation so in all these projects uh, whenever we are dealing with these uh, new construction systems we have conventional foundation and uh, uh, once we come to the plinth level, so I always say that get the foundation made, come to the, the plinth level or the floor level, ground level, finished floor level, uh, finished ground level, and then start using these uh, the new technologies. So uh, here the, the, the foundation being used is raft foundation, and uh, I don't need to explain you what is raft. Raft is a kind of, uh, you know, inverted slab. So it is a slab kind of thing instead of isolated footings for columns, and uh, um, you, you have uh, the entire slab laid, uh, you know, um, uh, for the entire, uh, the, you know, the building. So that is why it is called raft. And then what you see, wherever we have columns, there we have RCC columns up to the plinth level. And at the plinth level, they all are connected together um, through a plinth beam. And then over that, um, you know, uh, you can have those steel columns, which I showed you. So this is a typical uh, uh, reinforcement layout of your conventional raft foundation. And uh, uh, you can see here, uh, this is how that once the slab is being done, you see uh, this kind of thing. And what you see here, um, here, wherever we have the staircases, uh, all of you know uh, that um, at the staircase or at the lift, loads are uh, higher because those, um, you know, lift wells and uh, uh, 
staircase wells are designed for higher loads. So wherever we have those staircase wells and lift wells, there uh, the, the 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 height of uh, the depth of uh, raft is increased. It's 500 meter. Otherwise, uh, here it is 400. So another raft is added here, and that is why you see uh, this kind of thing. And over that, you will have columns. Okay. So this was about the foundation. I will show you through pictures what is being done there. Then the structural system I already explained to you, and let me again stress that we are not using hot rolled typical I sections which we used to uh, use in earlier times. You know, uh, when I studied in eighty four, eighty six, that time we were having only I sections and all, and we used to refer uh, to steel tables and all. But it is no longer required. These built up sections. Uh, comprising of few plates and you create a I section uh, very easily. So these um, built up sections are manufactured then brought to the site and erected to create this kind of structural uh, skeleton or structural system. Okay, the slab again here, uh, this slab, um, we are not using cast in C2 typical uh, slab where you have shuttering, then you put the reinforcement, then you have a four inch to six inch slab here. We are using a deck slab or it is also known as composite slab. So you have a deck sheet which acts as a shuttering um, and then you put a nominal reinforcement over this and do the concrete speed of three inch to four inch. So it can be done pretty fast and this is how it looks. So it is called deck slab, which is being used um, for all the floors and roofs. And this is that, uh, look at this, this is that innovative uh, technology being used for the first time um, at such a large scale in our country, in Lucknow. And this is called, as the name says, it is called, uh, see, these names, um, they, they, they come in with different names. So some sometimes it is called pre-finished PVC wall form systems, okay? So wall form system means pre-finished wall, means the wall is finished in the factory and brought to the site to be used as it is. Like you get the, you know, the, your jacket or your shoe from the, uh, the shop and start using it. Similarly, these walls are ready to use walls. And since they have a skins of PVC, they, they come in different uh, coloring options. So here we are using this kind of, uh, you know, white and off white color. So they come in different colors and they have, they are hollow because this is PVC and you have these hollows which are um, vertical as well as uh, horizontal. So you can uh, lay the reinforcement, you can lay the bars in this uh, as per your project requirement again. And uh, then um, you can fill these cavities with reinforce, um, with uh, the concrete, um, it can be, you know, nominal lightweight concrete if you are using it for non-load bearing application or if you are using it for, um, uh, you know, load bearing application, and then you can uh, have a, uh, you know, concrete of any grade. So here we are using M10 grade, uh, I will show you because it is being used as infill wall. So these are uh, those wall panels and I just got the picture for you to get you uh, the, the idea. All these are customized. So where you, you have corner, you have a L, uh, L joint or you have a T joint. So all those joints are made because these are customized, tailor made for your projects. You can see. So how the call, this is being inserted and how they are being connected, they are, they have a tongue and groove or slide and log arrangement. So it comes uh, of uh, these panels are customized and made in the factory of full height of your room and uh, specific width. So those uh, that uh, the, those panels are connected together by slide and lock or tongue and groove arrangement. So that's how you put them and then put the concrete to get the monolithic action. So that's how the entire wall is being made. No need of curing, uh, no need of plastering and immediately your wall is ready to use and uh, you can see here this is the this is just a section and this is just a wall uh, which is being put and these cavities um, why these cavities are provided as i explained you already uh, to enable insertion of reinforcement and to put concrete okay and uh, this is pvc wall form as i told you okay so this is a, a typical setup of manufacturing plant uh, the, the company has the manufacturing plant at two places and um, so this is the, the these uh, the, uh, wall panels are uh, made through extrusion process where you mix uh, pvc and other things in, in in a machine and then you get these kind of uh, panels okay and um, um, this again repeatedly i'm telling you these are customized so they come in different thicknesses in lucknow project we are using for external and internal walls we are using different thicknesses panels because internal walls do not require that thick uh, panels so external walls are 120 and this pvc is 3 mm 3 mm so this is 126 mm thick uh, uh, wall panel whereas internal walls are 64 60 is the core and 2 2 mm 2 mm both sides um, uh, is the pvc wall form. so internal walls are uh, 64 and um, if you see uh, the width of this panel is 300 around one foot and the height of the panel is 
um, your your um, story height, which is three meter in this case. So the entire story height in this form it comes, and then uh, so this is the kind of thing you get, and then you put them uh, you know through slide and lock arrangement by putting up the bottom rail and uh, connect this, and then pour the concrete to create a uh, wall kind of system. Let me also tell you here that you see instead of nine inch wall, we are using hundred twenty mm wall. So this is again, it's not prescriptive that you use nine inch wall. So that way, for the same built up area. Uh, you know, for the same built up area, you have more carpet area, so you get more space. Okay, and you see, we have just by tweaking the external to internal walls, changing the thicknesses, you can get a lot more uh, of space for the same cost and for the same built up area. So that is again the added advantage of these customized uh, innovative construction uh, systems. And you can see as yes, the the weight is very less, density of these uh, panels uh, are very less. They can be easily handled. Uh, and carried by one or two persons, and then can easily be erected. Okay, this is just to give you the technical specification sheet. Whenever we work with these technologies, we uh, we always evolve the technologies through all the technical parameters. So this is just a technical uh, sheet. You can see it can be produced in various heights. Uh, as for your requirement, it can be produced in various kind of thicknesses. We have used here 120 and 60. You can have 110, 155, 200, uh, 250 as for your requirement. The, the life of this panel is around 50 to 60 years. It is uh, sometimes it is being asked that we, being PVC is it fire retardant or not? So you can see uh, the testing has been done and um, uh, the, the the PVC wall uh, the, this wall form panels have fire rating uh, as high as two hours to one and a half hours. So and uh, for a normal residential building you require a fire rating of one and a half hours or one hour to one and a half hours so it meets all those criteria and you can see here uh, in this technical chain um, um, uh, in addition to this fire retarded uh, you know fire resistance all the other tests are being conducted heat and smoke release test you know that i was talking about uh, uh, you know indoor air quality so most of the materials which we use they constantly emit uh, volatile organic compound which hitting the inside air quality so that that is also being checked here ignibility flame propagation heat and smoke release required acoustic performance sound transfer insulation is also uh, being uh, you know tested and uh, those results are also being given then you see uv stability ultra violet rays stability and those kind of things so this technical sheet can also be accessed uh, so this I already explained you in detail. Uh, uh, this uh, this is how it is being put. You can see here, and this technology is already been uh, approved by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs by BMTPC. We have given a performance of legal certificate. Um, also, it has been approved by CPWD. So. This is that 300 mm or 200 mm uh, um, panel of full room height. Uh, and then you are sliding it through like this and that way and these openings can be cut at the side like this uh, through a cutter and then you can um, um, create this opening and then put a window frame and door frame. All you require is temporary uh, props to, uh, you know, so that it holds and once you need the concrete, once the concrete is set, then you remove this uh, you know, props. And the advantages, I, I don't need to go through only uh, two, three advantages I will, I would like uh, to draw your attention upon. Uh, one is this PVC wall form uh, is recyclable material. So making it sustainable and clean material, it has 55% recycled content and therefore it can be fully recyclable. And, uh, you know, this is fire retardant. It is resistant to UV bacteria and fungi even. Okay. And uh, this PVC wall form, it, it, it doesn't corrode, it doesn't chip, uh, and uh, it is stain proof uh, as well. Okay, it has higher uh, durability, and because it is of PVC, it is um, the, its uh, the base is polymer, so it is um, specifically advantageous in the, uh, the in the coastal areas where we have a problem of corrosion and uh, things like that. And it comes in a different coloring option. And uh, as you can see through the technical sheet, you can um, uh, find uh, out that. This system provides advantages structurally superior. Uh, it provides a structurally superior system in terms of structural strength, uh, uh, flexural strength, uh, and durability. And uh, limitations uh, are, are with all of, in fact, these limitations are there with all the technologies you require uh, uh, a specialized workforce. And uh, in that specialized workforce, you know, you need to uh, give training to your uh, the, the workforce. Uh, 
with that little training, uh, the, 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 you know, uh, the, those uh, labor workforce can be, be can be used to erect these wall panels. Also, um, when you do the, when you have to put the services and all, you have to use a special kind of equipment. You have to use cutters and all. Uh, you can can't do it with the, you know chisel and hammer, that's all a kind of thing because the entire PVC will get uh, disintegrated. So you require special uh, equipment. Also, with all these new technologies, because they are pre-engineered or pre-planned systems uh, here you have to decide all openings everything before and because changing uh, anything later uh, would be very difficult okay so all mvp services and all need to be pre-planned similarly door and window positions need to be planned uh, uh, beforehand okay now this was all about the technology and all and now let me briefly tell you the design things because uh, uh, we want to you know make you uh, understand uh, the entire thing so that you can uh, make use of these technologies you can make use of design philosophies and all those things so whenever we deal with these uh, new technologies you, uh, normally the project need to be given on design and build basis because not much is known about these technologies except their technical details and uh, or technical details and all so design build basis uh, you know the, was quite successful um, in the, the the highway highways in constructing the highways uh, so same thing is being borrowed from there and um, the here it is being used so what you do here you give your requirements you give your requirements uh, one minute. Sorry for the interruption, I got a call. Uh, so design build basis means what we um, um, do, we give the plot, we have a plot, then we give our specifications and requirements that look, we want to construct these many houses with these specifications and ask the agency uh, to do the design, uh, get that design uh, vetted from third party and uh, do the, uh, and uh, build the building. So they will do the, the structural design, design and uh, constructing is uh, the responsibility of uh, that um, agency. Uh, so the, here the agency which is executing our project, they are also present in this webinar uh, uh, is Messrs. Jam Sustainable Housing uh, LLP Ahmedabad. They have a JV with the Mitsushimi uh, company. Uh, they are doing uh, one more project uh, in Agatala as well. And the technology provider is Novel Assembler. And this is again another thing which I wanted to tell you that um, in more, we found that technology providers sometimes are not able to execute the project because of, uh, you know, PQ criteria and uh, not having a, enough experience. So through Global Housing Technology Challenge, we provided a platform where we, um, you know, uh, uh, created an interactive B2B the, the platform where the, the contracting agencies can interact with these technology providers and then they all both can come together to do projects with new technologies. So uh, this is design and build project. With these two agencies, technology providers, Noble, Noble Assembler, they are also present um, in this webinar, and the uh, implementing or constructing agencies, uh, GEM Sustainable. They have created a JV. Okay. Uh, this is a very technical uh, slide, so I will not get into the details, but I just wanted to tell you that whenever we do uh, um, any design, you need to have. Uh, First, evaluate the geoclimatic conditions. So, climate is one thing, and geo condition, geo hazard conditions means what are the wind velocities, whether it is a cyclone prone area, landslide prone area, flood prone area, what is the earthquake zone. So, these are called geo hazards, and based on geo hazards, you have to calculate the forces, you have to incorporate those features in design and in your load calculations, in your deciding the sizes of your uh, beam columns or structural system, thicknesses of your walls, and all. The, so that it becomes hazard based. So this is a typical, uh, this is the map of wind hazard map of our country. So this is given national building board and we have uh, also developed a vulnerability atlas of India, BMTBC. So from that, um, so this is uh, Lucknow, Lucknow for, uh, is in UP. So you go to UP and find out in which um, the, um, the wind zone uh, it uh, falls. So uh, wind speed in Lucknow is 50 meter per second. So based on that wind speed, uh, there is a code IS875. From that code, you can calculate the wind load. And for that wind load, you need to design your structure. But it's a high-rise structure, um, so you need to 
to uh, calculate and incorporate uh, the, uh, the the wind conditions, surrounding conditions, topography, whole lot of things are to be uh, taken into account uh, to calculate the wind pressures and to calculate the wind load. Also, the you know you have to design have the design philosophy. Uh, what kind of structure you want to design? Uh, so that that is for structural purposes. So here um, we are using uh, you know hot rolled steel built up I sections with lift and RCC uh, shear wall, and it is a moment resting frame. Then foundations are designed based on your safe bearing capacity. So uh, first and foremost thing is to carry out the soil investigation of the project site, get the uh, the, the the bearing capacity, water table, uh, and other things. As for your water table and soil strata. Uh, you decide the depth of the foundation and then accordingly design the foundations and then um, do the load calculations and then that load calculation is being submitted for batting and based on that design calculation um, uh, you have to do the design structure design. you th this uh, this is for calculating the uh, earthquake load so for earthquake load also this is the map and uh, uh, I always, in all my lectures, I stress on this because uh, India is a country which is susceptible to earthquakes more than 50%, 50 percent, 50 55 percent of our land area is prone to earthquakes. India is divided into four zones, zone two, three, uh, four, five. Um, uh, so the, you can see this red, red is zone five in Gujarat and entire Northeast region, Uttarakhand region and uh, some region of Himachal Pradesh and Jammu Kashmir is falls in zone five, which is the highest, uh, you know, uh, very high damage risk zone. Okay, uh, Lucknow uh, it's in zone three. Um, so the, accordingly, load factors are being taken, and uh, you know, uh, to design your uh, structural system, you have to take uh, into account different factors because we are using RCC uh, shear walls, and we are using structural steel. So for structural steel, we are using special moment resting frames. So there is some ductility factors and all those things. I'm not going into details. So from that, you calculate the horizontal seismic coefficient, um, and that for General seismic coefficient is multiplied with the seismic weight of the building or the weight of the building to calculate the base shear. And for that lateral force, base shear is nothing but a lateral uh, shear, a lateral uh, uh, force. And for that lateral force, your building is to be designed. Okay, very carefully. And for irrespective of your zone, you need to calculate this load because it's a high rise structure and this wind load and uh, earthquake load is very important. And uh, the good news is uh, to help you out, there are codes which are available. So strictly follow those codes, natural building code. For steel, we have IS 800. For RCC, we have IS 456. For load calculation, we have IS uh, uh, 875. For earthquake loads, we have IS 1893. And um, the, most of this information is also given in NBC 2016. Otherwise, you can always refer Vulnerability Atlas of India, which is made available digitally on uh, our website, the MTBC's website. And you can always refer that and get these uh, zoning and uh, hazard conditions uh, readily available to you. Once you calculate the load, you have to create the 3D model. So, I, in fact, I showed you the, the uh, layout and all. That layout is converted into a digital model in a computer through a software. So, this is that uh, S plus 13 uh, skeleton. This is how it looks like. This is a computer uh, model of your building. And then it is subjected to these many load combinations. So, you can see. So, that is why you resort to a software, CAD software. Uh, 13, there are overall 13 load combinations for which this building is analyzed and then for the worst possible load case, uh, the building is designed. And design means you have to decide the size and shape of your all structural elements, whether it's beam, column, walls, staircases, uh, uh, RCC shear wall and all those things. So based on these softwares you and based on these load combination and the 3D model, uh, you create, um, you carry out the design and, um, uh, you know, the last time the question was asked uh, what about uh, betting and also all these designs and that design basis report that is submitted to us uh, that is submitted to a third party um, normally to IITs and all they will vet the design and that vet design is submitted to uh, us and then then only it is being approved so all these designs which are being done by the agency they are being um, vetted by uh, IITs in this case the, all the designs are vetted by IIT then. Okay, and uh, you see this um, just for academic interest. Um, all these buildings are designed for limited state of collapse and limited state of survival. In no condition, the building should collapse. Okay, so there should not be any life threatening collapse. Even in the worst possible scenario, building should not collapse. So that is the design philosophy. And building should always remain serviceable during the, 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 the lifespan of a building. So that is another limit state. Okay. Now let me, so this is the difficult part is over. Now I'll take you through the, the, the various photographs. So that, that was all about the theoretical part and let me just show you the construction sequence. So um, I already explained you some structure, superstructure, so I will show you that. 
So uh, this is a structural drawing. As I told you, once you do the um, analysis um, and uh, through software you do the designing, then you create the structural drawing. Those structural drawings are given to IITs or any academic institution for vetting. And once they are vetted, what you see in the uh, right hand side is the the vetting by IIT, IIT, and then these drawings are handed over to the implementing agency. And strictly following these drawings, he has to do the layout. He has to lay the reinforcement. He has to follow those general conditions and all which are given in these drawings. So structural drawings are the backbone of any projects and uh, they need to be referred time and again. So it is just I'm showing you one typical structural drawings which shows um, the, where are the rafts. So you, what you see these are the lift and the staircase um, uh, um, the wells. So where there we have uh, you know uh, uh, the shear walls and other on all other places we have columns and all those kind of things. And this is the details of raft. So I will show you through pictures. This is um, the concrete grade being used uh, in the project. Uh, so you have to specify uh, the concrete gate. So we are using uh, the M25 for raft and all and for shear wall. It is the higher gate of concrete, which is M30. And uh, steel uh, is FE 500. And again, all these uh, concrete grade and all should uh, conform to IS 456. When we are talking about concrete, all materials uh, should conform to the respective codes, aggregates, sand, and all those things. Similarly, for reinforcement, we have IS 176. So um, the, the bars has to be restricted strictly conforming to that. I will just show you one sheet as well. Mm, then, um, then normally the mixed design is being done and as you can see why I'm showing you this mixed design here in this project uh, when we are using M25 and M30 we are replacing up to 30 percent 30 to 35 percent cement by fly ash. All of you know what is fly ash. Fly ash is uh, a byproduct of thermal power plant. It's a base material. So you know you can replace 30 percent cement by this fly ash. So, thereby making uh, your project or the concrete green and sustainable and that is why uh, we say it is resource efficient because you are using concrete which has up to 30 percent uh, fly ash component also through mixed design you can optimally uh, use different uh, materials which are scarce whether it is sand whether it is coarse aggregate whether it is water and uh, you can in fact uh, through concrete uh, mixed design you can check the quality and assure the quality of concrete Normally, it is good practice to have a batching plant uh, um, uh, installed at the site. So in Lucknow site also, we have a batching plant. Batching plant means instead of, you know, uh, you know, doing the mixture yourself or getting the, or getting the, uh, 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 you know, ready mix concrete, you have a, your mixing plant. Through mixing, uh, batching plant, you can actually, you know, accurately measure the quantities of the materials to make that grade of concrete. So accurately measuring those quantities, you get the, the, the concrete made, which is of uh, required quality. So that way you have better resource efficiency, you use uh, the materials optimally and you have a better quality control. And it, all these batching plants are computerized, so all these um, uh, quantities of cement, sand, water, all those things are strictly adhered to and uh, strictly measured. And then at the site itself, you have to have a quality control lab and quality, uh, in, uh, whenever you do a uh, concreting or uh, anything, you have to uh, cast the cubes and then concrete strength is checked through a compression testing machine. And similarly, slump and other things for workability is being tested. So at the site, when you go to the, the, the site at Lucknow or any other lighthouse project site, you will find uh, that uh, uh, there is a quality control uh, lab established and there uh, you can uh, and check the quality of whatever material you are using. Also, what we have done is we have also, uh, you know, uh, put a third party inspection uh, and monitoring, uh, the, you know, party third party inspection uh, agency in, in the project. And um, for all these lighthouse projects, IIT Madras is doing the third party inspection and monitoring for all these projects. So um, we are also doing one check. Another check is being done by third party, which is IIT Madras in this case. And uh, another check is so there are three, four layers of um, the checking of uh, the quality and uh, the, the, the project. Uh, so one is independent lab, quality control lab, one is third party and that one by the um, by us. Okay. Uh, this is a typical, so whenever you use any material, so it has to be standard IS certified. If this is not IS certified, then suppose you are using steel or you are using sand or you are using cement. So all these materials come with a manufacturer certificate. So that manufacturer certificate and um, the, when you are using in such a huge quantity, cement, steel and all, um, the, the some of the, from uh, every lot, some of the material is given for the testing. So that to assure these. So one is quality control. Another thing is quality assurance. So you have to assure the quality. So Randomly, you uh, pick the material, the, the basic raw material which you are using in the project and give it to the third party and get it tested uh, as per the requirements given in our building's uh, new you know, Indian standard. 
So this is a typical uh, steel testing certificate, which gives the composition of, uh, um, you know, steel in terms of uh, various chemical composition, carbon content, iron content, and all those things. And then it's, uh, the, um, you know, uh, yield strength and size strength, and then elongation and all those things to assure the quality uh, being used. So that was about the material. Then let me just quickly show you. This is the foundation. So first of all, you have to excavate depending upon the depth of the foundation. Then you have to do the layout. Then you have to excavate. And after the you, you know the, during excavation, um, um, if you encounter uh, minimum depth here is 2.5 meter. If you encounter uh, rock and all, then you have to use mechanical excavators and all those things. Okay. So this is how this is the excavation pit. After that, you have to lay the uh, the plain cement concrete uh, because there there might be undulations and all. So, so to have a plain surface, you do a PCC, which is normally of um, you know coarse grade of concrete. So it is M10 is being used here, which is 136. Uh, so you need a you, you you lay a PCC plain cement concrete of 100 mm thick uh, over the uh, entire excavation pit, and over that you put the reinforcement. Here we are using raft. So this is the typical reinforcement of raft, and what you. Uh, see this, um, you know, this is these are the reinforcement of columns. So you will have a raft of 400 or 500 mm, depending on your design, and then from there you will have columns. These are sometimes these are called stem columns. They will uh, they will get terminated at the plinth level, and then all these columns will be connected with the plinth wheel. Um, idea here is to have plinth wheel is so that the entire structure acts as a box. So during earthquakes, it is very important that the entire structure should act integrally, or there have, has to have um, you know, monolithic uh, integral action or box-like action. So by connecting all the columns at the print level will ensure better seismic resistance. So this is the reinforcement shuttering of our foundation. And uh, you, you can see here, this already I showed you. So this is that 400 uh, mm, 500 mm raft, and where, um, wherever we have uh, lift and staircase wells, we are, there we are providing additional 400 mm. So this is, this is you see, this is the finished thing. You can see. Uh, so, and these are the columns. I will show you next slide. Yeah. So now this is the shuttering of column being done with the reinforcement. And uh, uh, now the concrete is, is being poured and then this uh, will be removed and then it will, the, the curing will be done. And at the plane level, they all will be uh, connected. So you see columns of M25 grade concrete are being cast up to plinth height. Uh, over already laid uh, raft. So first you lay the raft, over that you put the reinforcement and then over that reinforcement do the shuttering, pour the concrete and do this kind of thing. So this is how it looks like. You, you can see here, you might be seeing this water. So this water is being used for uh, curing purposes. That is why you, you see this stagnation of water. And uh, once you, because you have created this pit and you have made these columns and all, then you have to do the backfilling. Backfilling is also very important. So whatever soil you have excavated, that is to be filled again. And again, it has to be filled in layers and it has to be compacted. The idea is if you just fill the entire uh, thing, to, it is a 2.5 meter and if you fill it, there will be consolidation. Because of that consolidation, there, there might be settlement. So to, uh, to avoid that um, uh, settlement and uh, consolidation, you have to uh, do the backfilling in a proper form by sprinkling water. There are CPWD specification. In fact, state governments also, they have their own specification. So layer-wise, you have to do the backfilling with water and compaction and come to the uh, ground level, natural ground level. And at the natural ground level, you will have this kind of plinth wheel. So that plinth beam is the beam at the plinth level. So you see, this is a beam horizontal member. So all these columns, which we were talking about, all those stem columns, which are coming from raft, they are terminated here and connected with this kind of plinth beam. And what you see here, here we don't have steel columns. So here we have a shear wall. So it is a concrete wall. It is, these walls are coming only uh, at places where we have lifts and staircases. So I think uh, this you can see, and what you see here, this this is here the steel column will come. Now the next question is how do you how do you connect steel column with the RCC column which is uh, below the ground? So what we do, we put the anchors. I will show you in um, through some drawings. So these are those anchor bolts, and then your column will come with a base plate. So that base plate will be inserted on on these already cast. Uh, Anchor bolts and then the through nut and bolts, you will uh, you know tighten this and erect the column. Okay, so at the time when you do the casting of plinth beam, this portion of uh, plinth beam and column with these anchor bolts are cast together. Okay, so as to have a um, you know monolithic uh, base uh, with these anchor bolts, and then all you have to do is you have to put a base plate um, along with column. Column will come fixed with this that base plate. So what you have to do is you have to just insert the base plate with the column here to erect the column. I think I have a picture I will show you. 
So this is how it is being done. Uh, you will see now the, the 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 casting of plinth beam has already been done, and you have these. Uh, uh, you know, uh, anchor boards and what you have to do now, you have to put the columns here. And what you see here, uh, this is hedge cloth or a bori. Um, why it is being left? So, so as to have a proper curing. So you have to, uh, you know, put the water and uh, so as, you know, to minimize the evaporation, uh, you put a wet cloth. So normally hedge cloth it is called or bori we call it. Uh, so, so, so this cloth is, um, the cloth is kept wet so as to have enough curing so that uh, the, the, these beams and uh, you know this structure gains the strength RC structures. Okay, so uh, this already explained you. Uh, this anchor boards have already been cast with concrete at the plinth level, uh, and over this the built-up columns with base plates will be uh, erected. Okay, another uh, view you can see it. All, all these are from uh, the, the project side of Lucknow only. Please, please, please. please. Okay, and uh, now let's come to see. So this this was all about uh, the the your uh, substructure. So once we come to the plinth level, after the plinth level, our superstructure will uh, uh, come. So this is that superstructure we are talking about. And next, let me show you. So in superstructure, you will have this uh, beams column and that uh, deck slab, which I will show you. But before that, I wanted to show you this also. Uh, if you are a structural engineer, you might be interested in this. You know, it's a high rise structure comprising of S plus thirteen structure. Imagine. So the entire structural integrity of the entire building will depend upon the connection of your steel column with the foundation. Okay, so if it is not done properly, there, there may be overturning or uplift, something called uplift. Um, you know, what will happen because of wind or, you know, later loads, this column will overturn if these anchor bolts are not designed properly. So this is, this is very important and you have to do a proper design. So these anchor boards, although they look, um, you know, very trivial, but they are the most important for ensuring the structural uh, integrity of your foundation with the uh, superstructure. So these are designed depending upon the dia, what should be the threaded length, what should be the, um, the, the, the grouted embedded length. And then you, have, you just imagine if you put a bolt simple like this without 90 degree bend, what will happen? So in case of any little load, it will just, over time. But if you just provide a bend like this, it will provide a stiff resistance. So this is a very simple detailing, which will ensure uh, uh, your, um, oh, you know, which will prohibit uh, your overturning or uplift. So all these things are done depending upon the dia. These things are designed and uh, given uh, to the to the LNC in, in form of drawings. Okay, uh, this I will not explain you. All these columns come in a specific height. So these columns here are six meter height. So when you have column, you have to connect column to column. So how will you connect column to column? So column or I sections will have uh, beam and uh, will have web and flange. So on B, uh, web and flange, both are connected so as to ensure shear and fracture connection. So this is how these are being connected. Okay, so I'm not going into detail, but you can always refer these drawings. These drawings are available on the uh, website. Uh, of each lighthouse project as well as with the contractor so you can always see so this is web and flange okay if you don't understand this is called uh, web and this is uh, this is called flange this uh, this portion and this is called web so when you connect column to column you have to connect both the, uh, the, the 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 columns with at the web and flange so as to ensure shear and fracture character so similarly uh, you have shear wall to steel beam. So you have beam and you have uh, shear wall. So con how concrete wall is connected with shear, um, steel beam, this is how it is being connected. So when you cast a uh, shear wall at that time itself, uh, you insert, a, you know, you cast a steel plate with lug bars, okay? So th that is cast and through that lug bar, through a cleat angles or through angles and nut and bolt, you, you connect uh, your beam with your shear wall. And this is how it looks like. Similarly, you will have column and beam connections and column and beam connection last thing somebody was asking with me about your ductile detailing. So these column uh, and beam connections uh, are uh, designed, you know, either uh, to, to take either shear or uh, to take shear and movement. So flexure connections or shear connections. So if you are having shear connections, then you have to connect it only at the web portion. If you want to have shear and movement connection, then you have to connect it at uh, flange and, uh, uh, you know, web portions. So, uh, uh, please don't uh, get me wrong. This is just a pure structural engineering. Uh, the idea here is uh, that all things are integrately and minutely designed. Each joint is being designed so that it uh, it acts, it performs in a particular fashion. Okay. Now you see. 
So now, uh, having gone through those theory, this is how columns are being collected. So what you see here, that is that base plate. And for each of these base plates, uh, we have a template made. These are grouted with uh, non-shrink grout and all. And then over this, this column, yeah, yeah, you can see this. If you can see this, this column has come from the factory with a base plate. So all you have to do is you have to put it here on already grouted anchor boards, which I showed you earlier. And then you have to tighten them uh, with nut and board and that's how it is being erected. and what you see here here the beams will come this is six meter high and then you have to connect another uh, you know column with this uh, uh, using the drawing which i showed you earlier you can see this this is uh, your beam and column and uh, uh, they are uh, you know temporary bracing is being uh, done uh, like this and this is that is skeleton i'm talking about so this comprises of that structural structural system so uh, what we are using here, built up steel uh, sections for beam and column. Uh, another view you can see, steel beam and column, and what you see um, inside, that is that uh, shear wall I was talking about. So this erection of beam and column. Now let's come to after this. So once you have erected the structural frame, uh, you have to, uh, because all these new technologies, they have a particular standing operating procedure. That, uh, how you, like you, you know, install a machine. Uh, or uh, you install any electronic device. Similarly, here you have to do it in particular fashion. So you make the foundation, erect the column, then you yeah. lay the, the slab, and after the slab, you have to lay the. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so uh, once you have laid the structural, uh, this thing, then you have to lay the, the, the slabs, and after that, you have to lay the wall panels. So I will show you them one by one. Uh, so the, this is that profile sheet I was talking about. Uh, just to give you basically, it is 0.9 mm thick um, the profile sheet, and um, I think I have a slide. Yeah. So this is how it is. So the, uh, over already laid uh, these beams, you have to do the, these profile sheets, and these profile sheets are 0.9 mm thick. And over that, so these are those beams we were talking about. Over that, you put that profile sheet, and then you have to put a nominal reinforcement. It comes two ways. Okay, so it's a nominal reinforcement and you do a 75 mm thick uh, concrete escape. So it can be done pretty fast. You don't require any shuttering at all because this acts as a part of the shuttering. Once you have done this uh, slab, then you will, will go to the, those wall panels. So this is, uh, once the slab is being made, then it is being cured. Um, it's been cured for 12, 14 days and then um, they, 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 you can start, uh, you know, erecting the walls. So this is the process. Uh, I will show you through drawings so now. Uh, so you transport the PVC wall panels uh, at the site, erect the, this already explained you, sorry, not, yeah. So now you have to erect the PVC walls for, you know, the, if two things are very important whenever you do this kind of hybrid construction, jointing. So I showed you column to column, beam to column joint. Now the next element comes slab to, um, you know, deck slab and uh, a column desire, column, uh, sorry. So these, you know, here they, they, some bearing is given where uh, they, they, then they are connected with this your steel column and then you have to erect the walls. So wall, walls, these walls are connected with slab. So this is the upper portion of slab where we create a double wall and these double walls, you know, they go, they, they go at a particular spacing. So you provide inner and outer uh, walls in the openings and then through these double walls, they are connected with the slab. So, so अगर कभी इतने इतनी पुरानी बनी है तो जरूर पास हुई होगी अब इसका नगर पालिका में रिकॉर्ड कर लो प्लीज म्यूट योर माइक मिस्टर दिस इज मी यार सतीश चंद्र जी यार पता नहीं किसकी आवाज आ रही है Okay, so uh, this is again, uh, so again, this is a drawing which shows you. So through these double walls, you connect your walls with slab and the, the walls of upper floor and higher floors are also connected to this so as to maintain the verticality and to uh, maintain the proper load transfer. So what you can see here, structural integrity and monolithic behavior of wall and structural frame is achieved through these double walls which are put like this. So now this looks like this, I will show you here, yeah. So these are those PVC wall form you can see, and this is how these are being put. And this you can see these are the, um, the openings here where you can put the reinforcement. And once you have uh, erected them with double walls and all, you um, do the concreting. Here we are doing M10 yeah, concrete. Yeah, Otherwise, you can have a lightweight concrete, or you can have, uh, um, you know, you can leave them hollow as your requirements. So here the requirement was uh, to. Mm -hmm. Part is different to these walls by putting M10 concrete. So, concreting is uh, done uh, through these hose pipes through pumping. And uh, once the concreting is done, this is all set, then it is ready to use. 
Okay. Another question comes that how do you put um, services and all these things? So this is the slide. Having laid, you know, before doing the concrete, this is very important. If you do the concreting, then you can't put the services. So before um, before doing the concreting, all the service service lines, whether MEP, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, all those, you can cut the grooves and all. And these grooves and all are cut with the special cutters, not with your uh, um, traditional, typical uh, chisel and hammer. So um, all those service lines you can put through, the, and there are openings here. As I told you, these are hollow and we have these openings. So these openings facilitate uh, smooth uh, passing of your um, plumbing lines and sanitation lines and all those things. And these are openings are cut and then you can very easily put plumbing and um, electrical lines. And uh, how um, the door and window frames are being put, they, these are shown here. Here what you do is wherever you have door, you cut the opening, then you put a capping panel and then you do the concreting. Once the concreting is set, then you remove this and put a window or a frame. This is how it is being shown. So this is how it is being put. And uh, once you know, the, you you have to allow the concrete to set. And um, the, during that setting time, uh, you have to you know the, um, do the propping, temporary propping. You have to do so so as to ensure the verticality of the wall. Uh, okay. And this is how this pouring is being done. And uh, again, the question being asked, and when you are doing this pouring and all, how do you compact? What is the curing? Since the concrete is uh, encased between this um, um, the wall panel, so no, you don't require any curing because heat is not lost. Um, secondly, um, you know, these pores are being done in a one meter pore, and you are using a self compacting concrete. So, self compacting concrete is a special type of concrete which, uh, um, you know, uh, which doesn't require any, any, any compaction. You can see here again. This is the question being asked: Can we can these technologies available to all kinds of plumbing, uh, traditional or uh, traditional plumbing, and uh, you know these seats, the, the WC, and all those kinds? Of, so you can see any kind of uh, sanitary installations or plumbing installations can be put um, in these kind of um, the technology or in this kind of wall panels. You can see here. And what I was trying to tell you: you chasing, uh, you have to do like this, and wherever you do the chasing, you have to do the filling, uh, proper filling with. The, a proper concrete frame. This is uh, then these are finishing items. Let, let me not go into those. So we are using high end finishing items, press steel door frames with plus doors, PVC doors for toilets, UPVC uh, window frames are being used, then vitrified tiles in all, anti skip tiles in bathroom and WC, put I store in common areas and the wet areas. This also explained to you in the beginning. Um, these are some best practices. So all of you go and see yourself. We are using rainwater harvesting, we are using solar energy, we are using solid waste management, we are using wastewater management. All these projects need to compare. So we have um, sewage treatment plant and that the wastewater need to be treated and need to be uh, used again um, for secondary purposes and all roads and all everything is being given here. So that's all and the, uh, now I will uh, show you a few pictures and then after that I will ask uh, Manish to take you to the virtual tour. So this is that uh, this is the current progress at present. This is uh, at block A, and uh, this is one uh, house which is already finished. So you can see here, and what you see here, this is that left or share, um, staircase well. Another view you can see. This is another view you can see. Another view, and this is the, the overall view of the project having four blocks. And last slide is this is how it will look like. So once the project is finished, you will not be able to make out what it is uh, made of. So all steel columns, everything is encased, and you all you see is this top glass finish. And uh, see this, this is a pre-finished wall without plaster, without anything. And it comes directly from the factory. And you can see this is this is from the project site itself. Uh, so you can see all those installations, plumbing, and all those things are easily done and compatible with your existing systems. So that's all. Uh, sorry for being so happy. And uh, what you can do is uh, uh, you can always, uh, you know, uh, connect with us. And um, this is the website. Please note it down. So this is this website. You can go and get access to all these uh, electric project sites. You can access the live status. You can access all the drawings, design business reports, presentation by going through. Uh, 
uh, this website. Also, we have a YouTube channel. Whatever presentations we are making today, this is also being simultaneously recorded in YouTube, and we will be uploading this also um, uh, uh, on the YouTube. So you can always access if you missed out something. And in case you require, you want to know something, you want to get connected with the, um, the technology providers. If you are more interested, you can always write to the ministry, uh, to director um, HFA five or to the joint secretary, or you can always write to me, and we will be we'll be more than happy to help you. So thank you very much. Uh, so with this, we come to the end of our technical presentation. And uh, now I will stop sharing and uh, I will ask if Manish, you are there. If you are not bored with my lecture, you can take them virtual tour. And I will help you out. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll take only uh, 30 seconds to connect with the live feeding of the uh, site. Okay. Okay. Okay, and uh, please, uh, dear friends, because it's a uh, it's a learning uh, platform. Whatever question comes to your mind, please write those questions in the chat box. And if uh, uh, time permits, we will try to the best of my capability. I will try to answer your questions. Otherwise, also you can go to the YouTube channel of BMTBC, where we have created a audio visual capsule on FAQs. So you can uh, go through that FAQ section as well. Huh? Okay. We do have questions uh, in our chat box. We'll take care of those. Uh, these are uh, views from uh, Lucknow, which is live coming in. And uh, I'll need your help and maybe somebody from the construction agency Chica. to describe. This is the full size view of one building. Okay, yeah. Karnan, Kapil, if you are there, because I have already explained them in detail. Now, what's going on in on site? If uh, Karnan Kapil, are you there? Or anybody from uh, site who can explain them? Because already theory wise, we have explained them. Uh, so, if somebody is there, if somebody is hearing me out, can you explain? Anyone? Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm from Nobel Assembler. Hello, yeah, very nice. Deepak, I think I have met you. Uh, if you can take them through the project, uh, it will be very good. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Whatever we explain, let them see through their own eyes happening yes, yes. at this side. Okay. Tumari image to blur are you, Manish? Yeah, now it's okay. Yeah. Explain them. So currently this is the super zoom in. Can we zoom in towards the left left screen, left area? Do you have the control system at your end? Lucknow? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, I right. cannot so we'll do it from here. All right. Left side left. So we are trying uh, from our end. I think the internet connection is very slow, so it will take some time, but yes, it will come. Okay, so what we are we are visibly seeing now at site uh, in this video. Yeah. So uh, basically now they are. Uh, yeah, please go ahead on this picture. So if we see towards the left of the screen uh, here, what they are currently doing, they had already installed the from we as we start the erection starts from the corner panel. The first panel which we insert is the corner panel and that then from the corner panel we go towards the both the ends towards the both sides of the wall so here now the corner panel has installed and they had started installing the further next panel now if we are, if you can see towards this uh, now, now they are lifting the panel currently yeah you can see this uh, in the left left bottommost portion you see this they are lifting that panel, which I was talking about 300 mm panel, and they will just slide it here. Yes. So live demonstration in front of all of you. That's very good. 
and see that that panel is easily lifted by one person and he's just inserting it there. Are you going to go there? You are showing it very well. Deepak. Uh, sir, I, I from my side I cannot operate. Uh, sure. In... Who is operating? Can you show that uh, the first view which uh, Deepak was explaining, where the two labors were lifting that panel and trying to insert them on the already. Sir, we are trying. It will take some time because the connection is very slow. So we are trying. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, dear participants, what you see is concrete. It is that shear wall I was talking about. So these are those uh, lift wells. Half inch, half inch, half inch. Half inch, yeah. Yeah, 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 Hello. In the meantime, you are connecting what you see participants here. Uh, this is a finished door and window frame. So what you see, this is a PVC uh, window frame and here we have pressed steel uh, frame. OK, so this is a finished wall and uh, uh, with the already uh, created opening for windows and doors. You can see this. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Move slightly more. Fine. Great. Yeah. Yes. Do you see the movement of these levers? You, you can see if you can see my yes. mouse. Yeah, yeah, you see this. Yes. Nice. So currently now on both the walls, the left wall and the right wall, both walls, the panel installation is going on. The panels of the particular length of uh, three meter uh, for doors, uh, whenever, wherever the windows are there, so the panel length of uh, uh, steel uh, height and the lintel height are factory cut and they are uh, sent transported to site. And at site, the particular location, what whichever panel is required, that panel is installed. Again, now they are lifting another panel here. If you can see in the left left side, one smaller panel is being lifted, which will be sliding. These are the window sill panels. And right hand side, if you, if you see in the right hand side, the three meter wall is being uh, lifted and. particular wall or particular length is been completed then the reinforcement the vertical reinforcement is inserted and the same way if you can see uh, there are some, uh, horizontal holes in the panels from those holes the horizontal reinforcement is inserted into the wall
Now, in the right hand side wall, they had lifted. The three meter wall panel. They are now they had hold that wall uh, that panel, and now they are tying the reinforcement with the dowel the dowels from the slab. Again, now in left if left side of the wall, we can see the smaller panels of, of the smaller length, which which are which are to be. Below the uh, window, they are sliding that panel there. Deepak, ये भी बताओ यहाँ पे channel होता है C channel, so that it is its verticality is maintained. Okay, for those who cannot understand English, I will also speak in Hindi. So uh, in right hand side, right hand side में अगर wall में आप देखेंगे तो three meter का एक ready made panel from factory जो आया है साइट पे, उसे हम install कर रहे हैं. वो उसके उसे ऊपर वाले labels को दिया जाता है, जो ऊपर वाला labels उसको hold करके जो फर्स्ट फ्लोर पे वॉल ऑलरेडी इरेक्टेड है उसमें उस पैनल में वो ग्रू में वो स्लाइड किया जाता है अगर आप लेफ्ट हैंड साइड में देखेंगे जहां पे एक विंडो अभी यू विल आप देखेंगे अभी कुछ समय में वहां पे एक विंडो फॉर्म होगी वहां पे जो विंडो के नीचे वाले जो छोटे हाइट्स के पैनल्स है वो अभी इंस्टॉल किए जा रहे हैं वो स्लाइड किए जा रहे हैं ऊपर से इन पैनल्स को ऊपर से स्लाइड किए जाने के बाद वहां पे जो है वो जो हमारा रेनफोर्समेंट होता है वो स्लाइड किया जाता है उसे जो स्लैब में से जैसे आपने इस पे, इसी प्रेजेंटेशन में आपने पहले देखा कि हम स्लैब में से जो डोवेल्स प्रोवाइड करते हैं सो उस डोवेल्स को उन रेनफोर्समेंट को टाई किया जाता है वहां पे इसी प्रकार हम वर्टिकल एनफोर्समेंट करते हैं और जो आप अगर इफ, आ, अगर आप देख सके यहाँ पे टूवर्ड्स द सेंटर ऑफ द स्क्रीन वहां पे आपको हॉरिजॉन्टल होल्स दिखेंगे यहाँ पर से हम हॉरिजॉन्टल एनफोर्समेंट जो है वो पास करते हैं फॉर डोर्स एंड विंडोज जहाँ पे भी डोर्स एंड विंडोज आने वाले हैं वहां पे पैनल्स uh, के साथ हम एक फ्रेम भी प्रोवाइड करते हैं फॉर डोर्स एंड विंडोज उस फ्रेम को इफ यू अगर आप यहाँ से देख सकते हैं यहाँ पे एक व्हाइट कलर की आपको बॉर्डर दिख रही होगी एक ओपनिंग में सो so, उस व्हाइट कलर की फ्रेम को हम यूज करते हैं उससे डोर का और विंडो का जो फ्रेमिंग है वो रेडी हो जाता है अगर आप राइट एंड पार्ट जो है स्क्रीन का उस तरफ भी देखेंगे तो अभी वहां पे भी एक थ्री मीटर का पैनल लिफ्ट किया जा रहा है इंसर्ट करने के लिए तो इसी प्रकार जैसे ही वर्टिकल और हॉरिजॉन्टल रेनफोर्समेंट इंसर्ट किए जाते हैं उसके बाद में इन वॉल फॉर्म्स को एक पर्टिकुलर पोजीशन में होल्ड करने के लिए एक ब्रेसिंग लगाया जाता है टेम्पररी ब्रेसिंग उनका पर्पस खाली यही होता है कि जब वॉल रेडी हो जाए उसको बिफोर कंक्रीट कास्टिंग वॉल को प्लम में टोटली वर्टिकली नाइन्टी डिग्री वॉल को अलाइन किया जाए उस ब्रेसिंग के हेल्प से उस वॉल को होल्ड किया जाता है एट नाइन्टी डिग्री पोजिशन उसके बाद उसमें जो है कॉन्क्रीट कास्ट किया जाता है एंड वंस कॉन्क्रीट कास्ट हो चुका है उसमें 
और जैसे ही कॉन्क्रीट सेट हो जाता है बाय द नेक्स्ट डे वी कैन रिमूव दैट ब्रेसिंग एंड जैसे वो हो जाता है हम उसके ऊपर डेकशीट डाल के हम आगे का वर्क कंटिन्यू करते जा सकते हैं Deepak, you want to shift uh, from other side? So, as you can see, now within five to ten minutes, that one particular wall, the left side wall, uh, the right side wall, uh, has already been erected. Now only pending work in that is the horizontal reinforcement to be placed, and after that, once that horizontal reinforcement has been placed. The bracing is done, and after that, concrete cast, concrete casting has been done. Now, to, uh, अगर आप left side में देखेंगे, तो वहाँ पे अभी window की जो frames है, वो लगाई जा रही है. विंडो की फ्रेम्स लग चुकी है विंडो के फ्रेम विंडो के ऊपर जो हेडर पैनल्स आने वाले हैं लिंटेल्स के वो भी अभी वहां पे इंस्टॉल कर रहे हैं विंडो की जो टॉप फ्रेम है वो अभी लगाई जा रही है वहां पे और इसी से अभी हम इफ यू कैन अगर आप देख सकते हैं लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पे तो पूरा एक विंडो का जो वो वॉल है वो पूरा भी रेडी हो चुका है Okay. आप अगर लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पे अभी देखेंगे तो वहां पे दो लेबर्स है वो जो हॉरिजॉन्टल रेनफोर्समेंट वॉल्स में इंसर्ट कर रहे हैं
ओके सो बाय द टाइम ये ऑरिजोंटल रेनफोर्समेंट इंसर्ट कर रहे हैं क्या हम कैमरा को घुमा सकते हैं टुवर्ड्स अदर ब्लॉक्स सो वी कैन सी द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ द अदर स्ट्रक्चर्स Okay, now uh, in the left left uh, left side, if you can see uh, where that window was erected, that com window is completed. Now that wooden bracing has been placed. Now this wooden bracing is placed to give a support when because when once the concreting is done, so that the load which is, which will be transferred that will be transferred to uh, for of above panels which will that will be transferred to the wood to this wooden bracing. Okay, so we can move to uh, the uh, other areas of the structure. Okay, so now in this block, uh, also it's a little bit blur, but uh, the work is going on. Hello, sir. Will you want to add something? The uh, one labor is tying the vertical reinforcement with the dowel. Okay, I think. I think we we have already explained you uh, explained them uh, everything. So now I think the, it is clear. They have seen it uh, with their own eyes. He can say implement or I. So I think it's all right. Sir, it's a very fascinating. In fact, from our side, we all who are sitting here are watching. I think uh, 10 15 minutes mein we saw an entire uh, unit coming up uh, from scratch so ek to bada fast aur bada acha lag raha dekhne mein i think learning bhi badi achhi ho gayi logon ki so wo jo jo explain kiya usko they have seen the, the, the hmm, exactly getting implemented too far. how fast it is as you said to bahut jaldi se ho raha hai bahut badhiya ho raha hai bas it's okay i think sir uh, uh, parallelly, if you want to take some of the questions we have in the chat box. Okay. Let me see. Let me see uh, the questions. Hello, hello, everyone. Okay. All of them have given their mobile numbers and all. Uh, that's okay. Okay. Oh, uh, the, there is a question how much is the difference in amount of steel used in construction over conversion? See, here in slab, we are using nominal, very nominal uh, the concrete. Then, uh, our, uh, there, yes, yes, in Telangana, there is in Hyderabad, there is a company called Kaljan who, uh, who is manufacturing uh, these uh, PVC bottles. So, in Telangana, if you want, uh, 
and all these addresses if you remember uh, in my presentation i showed you the list of uh, technology providers which we shortlisted through global housing technology challenge so you can uh, uh, go to that website or otherwise go to our website and get their numbers and credentials okay and uh, be in touch with them in case you are not able to connect with them just can say towards the uh, window wall uh, the labels are inserting the horizontal reinforcement into the wall Okay, uh, there is another question. Is there any recycled aggregate concrete being used here? Uh, yes, recycled aggregate should be used, but here we are not using recycled aggregate. The concrete mix design we have uh, because uh, the, I think in Lucknow availability of uh, aggregate is not a problem, but uh, the, your question is very valid and we must encourage. So the only thing is uh, for, for using recycled aggregates, we must have a availability of recycled aggregate because now Indian standard allows use of uh, recycled aggregate up to 10 20 percent in m20 or uh, concrete so it can be used but here we are not using okay next question there are no more questions okay uh, there is a question to me good afternoon sir request you to please share the details of suppliers manufacturers of light gate steel members so that we may have very nice uh, ajay sani ji uh, just write my email uh, id uh, ska at the rate bm i will just write in chat box uh, you just uh, or otherwise go to my website this you know the list of manufacturers is given on our website. Otherwise, we'll provide it. Okay. There are more than uh, 20, 25 uh, the, the light gauge steel manufacturers uh, in India right now. Okay. So absolutely no problem. We will provide you. Uh, or the, you 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 have that list on our website as well. Okay, this is the question, uh, Manish. If there is, uh, I am waiting to visit LHP Lucknow. How and when can it be possible? Answer the way, man. I think you can answer this question. On the floor, there is no uh, formality to be done. Anybody and any time can uh, uh, visit okay. this site. Any of these ah. sites. As Manish was telling, if you want to go at your own, please let us know, or you can go there, and um, there will be a, there is already a team there. They will uh, you, uh, they will facilitate your visit, and uh, you can visit. Otherwise, whenever we, if you are registered as technogry, whenever we conduct a visit to the site, we will take you. Also, very soon, um, you know, this GIZ will be uh, taking uh, uh, tours to physical tours to all these LHP sites. So we'll let you know that time also you can join or at your own, whenever you want to go, you are most welcome uh, to go there. Okay, there will not be absolutely any problem. And if you want to make it sure, then you just write to us. Uh, we will uh, uh, inform the, the implementing agency and technology provider and our engineers there. Okay. My four friends are also waiting to get, get a chance to visit. So, when you go, you tell us, we will facilitate your visits. No issues. No problem at all. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Huh. Uh, every uh, month we have a uh, fixed dates that we have decided every month we have 10th uh, 20th and 30th teen din to surely we do technogray whoever wants to visit uh, uh, every month 10 uh, tarikh 20 tarikh or 30 tarikh ko koi bhi ja sakta in batches so that is for the entire all six uh, lhp that we have proposed in fact okay. we have 230 participants today uh, right now and if somebody wants to visit uh, any of the LHP sites, uh, any day you can visit. Otherwise, we have fixed dates on 10th, 20th, and 30th. Okay. So, as Manish was telling you all uh, participants, 10 tarik ko, 20 tarik ko, 30 tarik ko ki, uh, we, we, you can go and visit the projects. So, uh, 
otherwise also whenever you want to go just let us know or you can go and absolutely no problem because these projects are being treated as live laboratories so if you are really interested to go see uh, you, you can go and uh, see otherwise 10 20 20th or 30th of and uh, every month you can make a visit with us uh, because if the tumhari team hai wahan pe if you want to answer this question thermal comfort of the present building because you are conducting a study uh, Vikas, if you are there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, somebody have asked question about thermal comfort of, of this complete building, right? Hmm. Of this, Fine, uh, we we are, this actually. And yes, sir, come again. Uh, of this, uh, yes, this technology is platform. Yes, yes, yes. Thermal comfort of this. Uh, yeah. Mere voice nahi kya? PVC wall form ka thermal comfort pooch rahe. So uh, being expert, you answer that question. Otherwise, I can also answer. The problem is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, we are conducting a complete analysis of all LHPs. Of all LHPs, uh, basically uh, with the with the with the input from simulations and and about the materials as well. So uh, the the analysis will be out within within two months itself. And uh, once it is it is there, we we uh, we think that uh, all the all the uh, requirement of of a thermal comfort will be met. But right now, what we uh, what we have a preliminary analysis for this particular site that LHP like now, uh, uh, I think there is a, a a good amount of thermal comfort which is available because of the PVC that we have, and yes. also the, the the concrete mix inside the inside the wall. So uh, it is comparable to a to a to a, a normal brick wall, but it is better than a a, a brick wall, uh, uh, slightly less than AC AC blocks, but but uh, thermally it is comfortable right now. And also uh, we have also compared this with the with the passive uh, designs of the complete structure in in terms of orientation, in terms of settings. And those are complying with the with the with the uh, the code that we that we have right now. So I think this uh, this particular site is having a complete thermal access uh, as, as, uh, comfort system, and also we are trying to get the the green rating from Griha. That is what you explained earlier as well. So uh, I, from my side, it is it is all okay. But the complete analysis will be will be there within within two months time. Okay, just to add to what Vikas said, they, uh, you know, GIZ is an international organization uh, based on Germany uh, for all these projects to answer specifically the thermal comfort aspects because it's being asked time and again. We are carrying out a scientific study by GIZ, which is, a, which is an international organization to know better about the thermal comfort. Um, but with regard to this technology, as he already explained to you, thermal comfort is not a problem at all. We already have data, but this Again, I independent study being done by it and we'll be sharing. They already have their, uh, you know, they're uh, calling it climate smart buildings. So we want to make these buildings climate smart. So their team is already stationed there and studying the various aspects of these. And as he explained to you, because of PVC and that kind of concrete uh, um, composition we have, thermal comfort is not a uh, not an issue for this particular technology. So with this, we come to the end. There are no more questions, but all of you are quite interested in uh, visiting these uh, project sites. So please let us know if you are, uh, you know, registered as the technography. I understand you all will get a communication from ministry uh, that we are um, going for this visit on such and such day. So that time you can come. Otherwise also you just write, we will see how can we help you. We will definitely, again, I'm giving you a, you know, open offer. Whenever you want to visit, you just go and visit. And because uh, already the implementing agency technology provider or engineers, they are there, they will, you just introduce yourself and uh, we will facilitate that visit for you. No, uh, not, not an issue at all. Achha, somebody is asking what is the difference between LHP and DHP? Uh, iska chota sa answer hai, DHP is a uh, small brother, yeah, not younger brother of LHP. So in LHP, we have 1000 plus houses. In DHP, we are having 40 plus houses. Because that 1000 plus houses, we cannot take ev um, every time. So DHP is just a shorter version of LHP to showcase the technologies. So that is called demonstration housing project. Okay, there is a, this is a good question. Are these technologies beneficial for mass construction only or it can be? This is a good question. Or for residential construction? Yes, very good. Uh, see, some of these technologies are good only for mass housing, affordable mass housing. 
but few of them uh, are good like this pvc wall form in abroad it is already being used for isolated houses preca sandwich panel system they can be used for isolated uh, houses light gauge steel structural system can be used for residential construction of individual or few houses okay so precast complete construction i am um, quite hopeful by the time i retire it will be used extended extended to residential construction in singapore and all you can buy a, a concrete element from the uh, factory and um, here also the day will come right now you can buy a toilet okay pre finished toilet you can buy uh, from the from the factory so uh, precast concrete construction will also be extended uh, to residential construction individual residential construction okay so uh, manish uh, there are uh, no more question if you allow i will ask uh, my good friend vikas to propose word of thanks and if you want to give them the, the, the our uh, calendar of events for the next two weeks you can just share with them and then we will ask vikas to propose word of thanks i think uh, sir manish ji is just uh, uh, gone for a meeting so uh, whether i should conclude the the, the meeting with yes, the word yes. of thanks Yes, yes, fine. Thank you very much, sir, for the nice session. And uh, it was really nice to see the live uh, live things out there. And we are really yeah. amazed to 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 view those uh, construction site, which is which is uh, again uh, as explained by Manish Ji as well about the about the timing that is uh, the time of construction that is happening over there. Within twenty minutes or so, they have constructed a full house, full flat over there. So uh, and I I must uh, suggest all the technologies all the all the participants must visit the site to to see uh, uh, see in person what is what is going on with respect to technologies what India is making. So it is a new India, my friend, and uh, we are now going ahead with the with the technologies. Uh, technology means the complete construction sector now is is going for a big transition. So apart from this transition, we are also moving towards uh, uh, getting the thermal comfort and energy efficient construction as well. So all this, uh, all these aspects have been widely covered in all these uh, six LFPs, and I am I'm, I'm very much thankful to the ministries who have taken up these projects with respect to uh, uh, all all inputs, not only with the speed of construction, uh, not only with the with the affordability of construction, but also. Also for the for the for the energy efficiency and and sustainable construction of the of of, of the building. Maria, watch it again. Watch it again, Tumari Das. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Now. Hello. Can you hear me now, sir? Ah. Uh -huh. Hello, Salaji, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, fine, fine. So, uh, so uh, uh, this is what what we have been uh, witnessing nowadays, and you uh, and you must have witnessed in COP26 what has been told by our respectable honourable prime minister about the the uh, pancha uh, uh, five things that we have to do, and what one of the thing is to have those construction, those 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 uh, energy a net zero approach with the. Uh, Carbon yeah. So, uh, coming to the point, uh, in terms of building section in India, you will be getting uh, all this consumption, energy consumption of, of around 3 percent for the complete building sector, and we are now targeting to to uh, to 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 go into into much detail of building materials as well when you are talking about embodied, embodied energy. So here in all these new constructions, you will find those uh, input of energy very less. And it, it is also a sustainable construction as well. So uh, uh, this is where we are trying to move forward about the construction technologies, about the building technologies. Uh, further, uh, further in all respect, uh, now uh, uh, we have uh, those those buildings in place. And if it is so, then uh, we must be requiring more more uh, technologies, more more indigenous technology to work out and uh, India is moving forward towards that as, uh, only. So I would uh, like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Mr. Uh, uh, our secretary, uh, uh, Joint Secretary and Mission Director, Sri Kuldeep Narayanji and, uh, and also uh, Mr. Avi Gautam, the Director of MOHA to, uh, to have come forward and to get these things organized in, in detail what is being done so far uh, with respect to live laboratory that is being uh, carried out in all these uh, these six uh, 
sixth place is we have been doing a uh, number of webinars, number of training programs uh, to to uh, build the capacity of, of our nation, of, of our uh, uh, professionals. And in this uh, in this approach, they are very much instrumental. And I, 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 I must say BMTPC also plays a vital role into it and they are Start, they have started this uh, this, this this project uh, uh, actually, and Celis G is the uh, is spearheading of of uh, this program from the front itself, and and I must say that uh, th that uh, with with the with the lead that is that is being uh, there from the ministries from from BMTC, PPC, all will happen in in one go. And I'm uh, very much thankful and congratulate Mr. Manish G as well and his team and his whole team who who wholeheartedly have uh, have come across with all these all these hurdles and organized this type of of of, uh, of uh, webinars and there are many many more to go so we will see many uh, inputs from uh, from all the experts what we have right now so uh, thank you very much and in last but not the least uh, i'm very much thankful for the team which is uh, which is there in in the lfp uh, sites who are working tirelessly to 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 complete this project and also showing the to the world how how we are achieving to to this uh, uh, under these uh, challenging conditions so uh, i i thank the the the, the participants who have uh, given their time and input for for this uh, completion of this webinar and we 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 are having many more webinars in the in the weeks to come uh, maybe by next week we will also be announcing more more uh, site webinars, site uh, uh, live feeds, and of course there will be many more things to come in terms of technologies and energy efficiency and thermal comfort as well. So thank you very much. Thank you all uh, for for part of, for for being a, a a a very good listener to all this uh, uh, webinar, and uh, we had a very good questions and answer systems as well. So thank you very much once again. Thank Manish, you. if you want, you would like to say something. Manish, oh, because... not... so uh, energy, it's all, uh, it's all from my side. Thank Eight you very minute. much. Eight minute. Uh, there was a question on cost. So I find Ajaysha, Ajaysha, if you can come on time, I saw you. Ajaysha is the implementer of this project, and he's also a great exponent of light gauge digital system. Ajay, if you are listening to me, can you show your face to the participants and uh, tell uh, them uh, uh, yourself about the cost? Ajay, Ajaysha. Because I just saw you and I just missed that question of cost. So, in fact, he's doing two projects. One, um, light, uh, you know, light gauge steel uh, in Agartala. He did a project for life mission also in Kerala with light gauge and this project. So, Ajesha, if you're not able to hear me, not able to, let me just tell you that the cost is 10 to 20 percent um, higher or sometimes less depending upon the project size and requirement. For light gauge, it is definitely comparable with your conventional cost of construction. So if conventional cost of construction is 2000, it comes slightly less than uh, that with precast uh, that light gauge is still up. In PVC wall form also, the cost is slightly less than your conventional cost of construction. I wanted you to hear him, uh, you know, hear Ajacha out, but unfortunately he's not there. So with this, we end uh, today's uh, webinar. Manish, if you show calendar of events, then you will be able to tell them the next cover. Otherwise, thank you all very much. If you can all uh, switch on your videos, we will take a photograph, you know, a virtual photograph. Uh, what do what you call it? Group photograph. Please uh, switch uh, on your uh, videos, all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. Yeah. Here we go. We will take one or two. One. Yeah, I'll take it again. Thank you. Okay, goodbye.